Yeah, if you've just joined us, pretty nice conditions at Newcastle. Let's uh, check in with the venue and, and see how it's looking. It's been a sensational afternoon. We're in for a cool but clear night at Osgrid uh, with the temperature dropping to about 14 degrees. So uh, rug up if you're heading out to the game uh, there today. A bit of a breeze around as well, 35 k's an hour, uh, they're saying. So that might um, have a bit of an effect on this game today. Now, Penrith would rather not think about the last time they met the Knights. It was round one, and this was an absolute thumping at the foot of the mountains. Junior Sauer crossed for two of seven Newcastle tries as they racked up a 42 points to eight win. Akuri Uate got his name on the score sheet uh, in the head-to-head. -head. The Knights lead this uh, with 18 wins from 34 encounters and they have won 10 of the last 15 matches since 2001. Yeah, that was a horrible way to start the season for the Penrith Panthers, wasn't it, Wiz? Terrible, especially <laughs> with their fans. Their fans are going, I thought we are going to have something a little bit better than what they showed. Uh, even in their trial form wasn't that, wasn't that great. They were missing some of their top quality players. As you mentioned, Luke Lewis, he's missing in today's game. But I think they can turn things around at Osgrid Stadium. They played 15 times there and Penrith are, are leading 8-7. So the, the, it's been a happy hunting ground for the Penrith side up at Newcastle, where the other way around, Newcastle always seem to have the wood at them down at Penrith mm, Park. Mm. Looking forward to this one. It's now time to join the team out at the ground. It's a very good evening to Warren Smith and Greg Alexander and a bit of a chilly Newcastle this afternoon, boys. Just a slight breeze, as you were talking about, Ryan, a moment ago, of course, uh, coming out of the southwest. So it's a cool one. And uh, But apart from that, Brandy, pretty good conditions for rugby league, as we saw during the Toyota Cup game here uh, just a short while ago. The Newcastle Knights coming out victors in that one. And they're probably slight favourites here at home to take out the uh, clash in the NRL as well. Of course, plenty of changes to both sides. It always uh, turns out that way at origin time that there are changes, of course. And James McManus out of the Newcastle side. But Kurt Gidley and Aku Uwate in particular. Uh, good to go for the Knights and that'll uh, please the local fans because uh, Aku Uwate in particular, what a crowd pleaser he has turned into be. Well, well, does anyone run the ball harder than Aku, uh, really? And, and he tests the defence. It, it's, it, it's such a commitment from the defence, really, every time he carries the football. Uh, he's fantastic to watch. He's handled origin uh, with ease and, and in the footwork and the speed of RQ will really test Penrith uh, on, on that uh, left-hand edge tonight. But uh, he's an excitement machine. They'll, they love him here in Newcastle. And uh, I look forward to watching him play every time uh, he lines up in a Newcastle jumper or now a New South Wales jumper where he was fantastic. He's handled it easy. He loves his music. <laughs> he's, a, he's a freewheeling dude. Yeah, like he's you. become a real character uh, in the New South Wales camp. Really brings a, a bit of vibe to the place, a bit of that mojo, if you like, that X factor, and especially with those carries, as you said, uh, back on the uh, kick chase team. Boy, you've got to be on your toes when he's bringing it back towards you. There's no doubt about that, of course. Uh, we also said Kurt Gidley, he is right to play tonight. Both uh, he and Uate didn't train with the team yesterday. They did a bit of a massage, a bit of work on the bike. That's all they did just to get their legs ticking over for tonight's game. And here is Kurt Gidley speaking with Gary Belcher. Kurt, a massive high on Wednesday night. Have you come down from that? Yeah, no, big night. Pretty exciting. Um, but just a quiet few days the last, few, uh, last couple of days and, and a bit of rehab and uh, back on against tonight. Back with the Knights. Four from five losses. Have you pinpointed what's going wrong there? Uh, it's been a disappointing probably past four games for us in between our two buys and um, you know, only one out of four games there and, and lost the other three, you know, sort of golden point, two points and, and uh, in the back five minutes against the Warriors. So we weren't far off, but they're the games you've got to win and we need to get back in the, in the winner's circle tonight. You feel there's a big responsibility? You've got a new halves partner again? Yeah, um, yeah. obviously Mullow's out and um, Bo Henry moving on. Um, so me and Ryan Stig tonight. Um, we're going through our halves this year, unfortunately. It's nice to be nice to keep the same two guys together on the halves, but injury um, injuries are a bit of a worry for us. But Ryan Stig, he's come through our juniors. He's worked really hard to, to, to get his spot tonight and um, hopefully has a, a great game. Thanks, mate. Beautiful, thanks. Yeah, great chance for the 21-year-old Ryan Stig to show what he can do because they certainly have gone through some five-eighths and halves that's turned out here in Newcastle so far this year. And Gary, the halves will get their chances after the forwards do their stuff in the middle of the field uh, to begin with. And, of course, out on the left-hand side of the middle of the field is where Neville Costigan finds himself. He may just be may, maybe only a couple of games away from a call-up for uh, Queensland. Of course, injuries might play a part in the lead-up to Origin 3. He might be just one game away from getting a, a recall to the Maroons camp. 
Oh, I think if you're looking for someone who's super tough and competitive, uh, Neville Cossigan is the man for you to go out there in a state of origin contest, especially when it's one all. You've got to go back to round one when he first started uh, playing for the Newcastle Knights where he broke his arm. He didn't come back to round 10. And in that stage there, he's probably averaging around about 71, met uh, 71 metres per game, 50-odd minutes per game he's, he's getting through. He's a very, very tough competitor. He's always looking to work on his game. And the one thing I like about him coming to this pack, he adds that bit of mongrel, Ryan. And if you're going to win against a very big Penrith pack, he's the man for the job. Welcome back to Bundaberg Super Saturday on Fox Sports. The Panthers are looking to avenge their opening round loss to the Knights. In a chilly Newcastle tonight, Penrith has won three of their last four games. So they're in pretty good form at the moment. Uh, let's get our Bundy top shelf tips. We've grabbed the tips from the guys out at the ground. Uh, Wiz, what are you... Yeah, good. <laughs> Braith, what are you tipping, mate? I'll speak for you. You're going for the Knights, aren't you? <laughs> no, I'm going for the Knights, yeah. I, I, I think with the experience of Gidley and the halves and looking at Naguama, Seau and Nuate, I just think they're too big and too strong out they, wide. These are brilliant. Not only do they taste good, they shut you up. <laughs> that's, that's a chocolate bar that really works for me. Where's I'm going to be doing the ranch for them. You're tipping the Knights? <laughs> yeah. Absolutely the Knights. <laughs> and why do I give you my tips on TAB Sportsbet? That'll be even better. I'm tipping the Newcastle Knights as well. All right, Wiz, uh, how confident should I be about the Newcastle Knights? Should I be going 13 plus today or 1 to 12? Oh, mate, actually, you know, I think that Newcastle Knights can pull off a, a big, big upset here and go 13 plus. $2.80. Now, what's that? 1 to 12 at 290 Ooh, I don't know. I'll, I'll go 13 plus. There you go. What about first try scorers, uh, boys? I'm going to go uh, Junior Sow. He had a pretty good run last time against the Penny Panthers. Who, who are you tipping first try scorer? I'm going to go Oato. He's just on fire at the moment. He's a hot favourite, isn't he? Seven uh, bucks. What do you reckon, Wizard? Well, he scored five tries against the Panthers. So, mate, I was going to go Uate, but, you know, Sorry, Neville Costigan. No, it's all good, mate. It's all good. Neville Costigan. We're going to throw a little forward in there. OK. He'll have a yeah, go. Big Neville you? Costigan oh, fan, oh, oh, Mate. If, if I was coaching, he'd be one player that I'd certainly have on my side. Do you see this being a high-scoring game? A lot of points, maybe defence uh, won't be uh, a major factor in this one. Maybe maybe a lot of attack? Uh, look, uh, the Panthers, they, they probably let in around about 20-odd points a game, and, and that's a little bit concerning for them, where the Newcastle Knights, they're up there quite high, so they're at 18 and a half. So both sides can score points. The big issue today, who's going to have the mental approach to stop the other side from scoring points? And I think if you're on your home paddock, you get 20,000 fans there. I think Newcastle had that, and they'll outscore the Panthers to win the game. Looking forward to this one on the other side of this break. All the action live from Newcastle between the Knights and the Penrith Panthers. You're watching Australia's sports leader, Fox Sports. This is Bundaberg Super Saturday. It's round 15. Here we are at Osgrid Stadium in Newcastle. A chilly early evening as we await the rival, arrival of the Newcastle Knights and the Penrith Panthers. Both sides come into this one with a five win and seven loss record. And the winner could, in fact, find themselves in the top eight, supplanting the Bulldogs, who are in eighth place on the NRL ladder at the moment. It's Gidley from right in front, who is used up all the time on the clock, as he's allowed to do. The penalty coming in just less than a minute remaining. He puts the flags in the air. And with this victory, the Newcastle Knights find themselves in the top eight. They've beaten the Panthers here tonight, 16 points to 12. Well, they have been on the back of some narrow losses. Of course, a fortnight ago, a 17-16 golden point loss to the Tigers. Two-point loss a couple of weeks before that to the Roosters. So they get their close win here. And they were the better side. Better second-half performance by the Knights over the Panthers. Some good individual performances. Ryan Stig on Debu was outstanding. The skipper, Kurt Gidley, and certainly closed things down for the Knights at the back end of the game well. 
was a different looking Knights lineup tonight with Peter Matatia playing just his second game and Ryan Stig on debut. He was impressive. Let's go downstairs to Gary Belcher. He sure was impressive uh, on debut, Ryan. Uh, you must have found out pretty late in the week you were going to start. How were the nerves? Oh, it was actually, I found out about Tuesday or Wednesday, so I had a bit of time to sort of get myself ready and that. And uh, yeah, I was a bit nervous, but. Yeah, just happy to get out of here. Yeah. You feel not feel good there, mate. Setting up a try. You had a clean line break, a couple of line break assists as well. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm reasonably happy with my game. So just hopefully build on it next week. Yeah. That helps having a guy like Kurt Gidley inside you. A lot of experienced players around you. Yeah, oh, mate, it's great to be able to play with you know these boys. Looked up for them for a fair while now, and yeah, it's really good to get out of here and have a run with them. I know you haven't had long to reflect on your first grade debut, but it must feel pretty good, mate, to finally have it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Dream come true to do it here at home and in front of all my friends and family. And Yeah, it was great. You played very well. Good on you, mate. Thanks for that. Beaten by the Newcastle Knights tonight. Uh, with their wounds in the Penrith dressing room and think about what they have coming up next week when they take on the North Queensland Cowboys back on more friendly turf. We'll take a break and come back. Still a lot more to come, of course, tonight right here on Bundaberg Super Saturday. Both sitting just outside the top eight, it was the Knights who wasted no time at home. And here's Costigan! They were as lethal defensively as they were on the attack. Lachlan Kutu has monstered! Newcastle taking an 8-0 lead into the break. The Panthers then closed the gap early in the second. Yusefa, who gets through the hole. The Knights with a big chance soon after. Simmons coming across. He gets to him. They were unstoppable when Origin star Akila Uate got the ball. He steps away from Lachlan Coot and scores. Coot then fumbled a brilliant chance for the Panthers to reply. It was going to be the try of the season. By the but his teammate made amends. Yusefa gets across the line for his second try of the game. It wasn't enough. Newcastle holding on in a mistake-riddled second half to win 16-12. It does appear for a Newcastle fan you'll fin finish the season with very few fingernails because they, had, they play in plenty of tight games. This wasn't the best game of rugby league you'll ever see, but I loved it. I thought it was tight, it was exciting. Uh, it had a little bit of everything. The only thing that wasn't there was a, a, a penalty for a deliberate forward pass because we had everything else that happened in this game. It was loose, wasn't it? It was, it was loose <laughs> it was and loose. there was mistakes in that. And there was a, we'll have a look at a scrum food uh, against the head. It, it had a little bit of everything. Joey, I've got to give Kurt Gidley the, the ultimate compliment because I think his influence now at Newcastle is akin to what yours was there which is about the greatest rap that I can give him and we saw it at the end of this game in the last three or four minutes uh, with just two little kicks from Kurt Gidley they needed to get the football back and this is what 72 and a half minutes to go and he forces the line drop beautiful out. kick and, and you look and then again he chased it he chased the first kick but he's playing with a busted shoulder. He's got a, a sore knee. He probably shouldn't have played, but that's the sort of player Kurt is. He's, you know, he's red and blue all the way through, a local boy. Absolutely loves the club, and he'll do it again next week. Both on tackle for the kicks. Yeah. So he's playing with his head. He's not waiting till the death where he's getting pressure put on. Exactly, and, and that's, that, that was what they needed to win the game. They needed the mm. football in their hand. Um, unearthed a, a, another good young talent here, 21-year-old Ryan Stig. Mm. What a debut he good had, uh, Nambucca boy. Um, he gone to, went to North Queensland after being part of the Toyota Cup team for the Knights. He looked sharp and I've got to say defensively, which is what I always look at for young players, he was right up to the mark there as well. Yeah, he's been in the junior system look, for a long time here. Yeah, he gets this has pulled up, but that could have been the most important tackle of the game. Stig on, on Brad Ty very, very late. Yeah, he's from Nambucca Heads. He, uh, he's in the junior system uh, right through at Newcastle. Couldn't get an opportunity. Went to the, the Cowboys and, and come back. Got his opportunity last night. And he was one of the best on the yeah. on field. He's First a, touch. I think he's a deeply, deeply religious young man. I think his father's a preacher in a in in the church okay. where he goes. Cool. Uh, it's great to see him do well because he's toiled away for a long time. So congratulations to him. And when you consider that's on the back of losing Jared Mullen and Bo Henry departing yeah. as well, so it looks as though what happened to Tyrone Rose? Tyrone Roberts. Tyrone Roberts. He was out he's, he's, mm. he's out for another sort of two or three weeks with mm. a um, with a strained posterior cruciate. Now, I went up to the Newcastle presentation for their 16s and 
18s um, last week, the 16s, they made the semi-finals with the Matthews. The 18s, they were the, the national champions. Um, and the one surname that seemed to surface very regularly during that particular night was Matter Utah, I'm not quite sure if that's the right pronunciation. Mataria? Mataria Utah. Well, Ready? Let's go. Wait up. Get the, get the camera there are, on here. There are four young Shall men we? up there with that surname, yeah. all brothers. Come on. Behave yourself, Hitler. And Peter, he, <laughs> um, he played his second game in this. They're a very, very talented family. Well, Peter's been, uh, he's been earmarked for greatness for a long time in, in the juniors. He won the Brian Carlson Award, which is a, a really high um, high profile under 17s player of the year. I think some great players have won that. Brett Kamali, Rodney Howe, <coughs> myself, uh, <laughs> to mention a few. But yeah, he's been waiting in the wings a long time. Signed up for another two years, so. It's great news. Yeah, Brian Carlson Award. It's actually now called the Andrew Johns Medal as well. So, thanks, Phil. I yeah, didn't want to say that's that. That's a great night oh. up there as well. But well done, <laughs> <laughs> well done to the Newcastle oh, side. Uh, as I say, that some fairly tight ones uh, went down to Golden Point going into this one, but they. I think they're just in the eight now. Um, and they're a good side to watch Newcastle. Penrith, well, they had a winning run going into this game, but um, obviously missed Luke Lewis, no Michael Jennings. Can I say Masada Yusefa played the game of his Lewis. life last yeah. week? Jeez, he played well. Two tries. Mm. He plays oh. a back row, didn't they? had three hookers. Yeah. Well, they had Nafi Selawini, yeah, yeah and they, um, Kevin Kingston, and then Masada. I don't know what well, Masada was playing. Must have been, looked bigger. OK, well, this is what was said in the sheds after the game. Well, Neville, nice to crash over for the first try. Yeah, no, it was good. Um, now he, one of my mates said he'll put me off the first try screw, and I said, I oh, don't do that, but, you know, it's pretty lucky. And A couple of penalties in the play the ball tonight. Uh, you haven't had a lot of trouble with that before. What was going on tonight? No, I, I got up and played the ball. I thought I did, but um, I, I was filthy at myself. I, I got to do a couple of practice training, and, you know, that's... that's well, we got the win tonight, so I'm pretty excited about that. It's been nice to get a couple of wins in in, in one week. I've, I've been on the other end of it where I've uh, had a couple of losses in a week, and that's not real good for the mind, that. So it's nice to get a couple of wins up in, in the week and, um, and just have a rest tomorrow. Yeah, sixth win of the season, and uh, going the right way up the, the competition ladder are the Newcastle Knights. Now, what about Ricky Stewart's idea of getting players to sit out two games rather than the one. Um, obviously we've got the Manly side playing the Dragons on that Monday night and then he's got to take them straight into camp. Well we thought we'd get out there and ask a few other coaches, other people in the game what they thought and uh, here's Rick Stone. Yeah, look, it's a tough one. I think Sticks just throwing that up to um, for a bit of a talking point and realise how important the game is for New, New South Wales footy. It is it is massively important. But when when the rules are laid out early in the season, everyone understands what the story is. I don't think the NRL is likely to change. We're going to pump up your tyres right now. Righto. There's a kid playing for Newcastle last night on debut, Ryan Stig, and I, yeah, I, I watched him play, and I straight away said, "That's Freddie Step." Now let the viewers have a little comparison. Right. This is Brad Fittler scoring a try, Anzac Day a number of years ago. The Anzac Day battle against the Dragons. Left foot, the left foot step and the way you leant forward top of your body and put the left foot step on. Mm. That's a nice moment, wasn't it? That one. That Age shall not that weary a, them, I think Rab said in commentary. That was a good day, that. How good were you? Yeah. <laughs> so the step there, there. now in all seriousness, <laughs> Brad, watch the young bloke on the boo last night yeah. for Newcastle, Ryan Stig. To me, it may as well have been Brad Fittler. Yeah. This yeah. lean forward yeah. and step yeah. off the left. Yeah. yeah. Where's he coming from? It's funny, you know, his first touch in first grade, he did exactly the same thing as I did. Um, broke the line like my the first time I got the ball I sidestepped. Did you the top up, didn't you? That was a Campbell and then chipped over yeah and then against Cam Campbell yeah, against Campbell and he did exactly how, how the old same. Young Stig? Well, he's, well, he's outside the under twenties. Played under twenties a few years ago. Played for the Northern Pride last year up in the Intrust. In nineteen ninety, we had a couple of big nights in Newcastle. <laughs> oh, steady. This show, please. Can, um, the man who sits in your chair normally, the Duke of Penrith, can always yes, says, yes. no matter what position yes, you play, yes, you've got to have I a kick. In attention. case the ball comes to you on the last tackle, you've got to have Absolutely, a kick. Absolutely, I'm with you. Last night we proved that Keith Lalia yeah. does not have a kick. Keith. This is one of the worst kicks you'll see. On last tackle, Keith gets it. I better kick it. It's a hack. It's off the yeah. side. Yeah. And it's over the sideline. He's, He's got, got a future. Yep, I've done it. Yeah. Yeah. Good on him. Good on him. All right, to another blunder. In a bizarre night, Richie Fayoso's play the ball. Uh, I think we need to examine this, MG. Uh, what actually happened here with Richie Fayoso? Put it in reverse, plays it, then... <laughs> 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 oh. Well, he got pushed in the... He in the pushed. Yeah, he got pushed, the poor bugger. It's should a penalty, have been, Probably it? should have been a penalty against Penrith. It's a penalty. Uh, he did again. <laughs> His hands were on him. It wasn't a push. He was, he was trying push. to get a penalty. 
He's leaning on. And he copped it. He what, leaning on. What do you think the, the Duke thought about Penrith last night? His, their performance. They were disappointed. <laughs> Coming off a bye, it was disappointing. It seemed like they were still on the bye. To be quite honest, mm. they again oh, weren't last night. Quite there. The nights, but, mm. And finally, a scrum won against the feed. You wonder, well, we've worked hard on scrums this year. The referee's trying to get things right. And this is the result of it, the perfect scrum. Look at this, number eight, uh, Farish has got his head up, uh, and uh, Newcastle win it. How That's good. the food, Freddie. Here oh, we go, good. see how it's won, watch it. So last right. year they would have called that Look at it, yeah, look exactly. at it, look at it. A hooker won it. There it is. Great work. Uh, yeah. We want to see more of that in rugby league. Yeah, I put a bill yesterday, actually, and there's been 25, I think, now. Uh, Against after the Johnson's, no, after Johnson's try, tries straight off the scrum. So they're doing a good job, holding them in, mm. keeping them down. I think they're doing a good job, and sides over time will get better at attacking on that play. Well, a scrum won against the feed. Let's it. see if it happens again in the next uh, couple of months. I'm going to have a dollar it doesn't. Uh, we'll take a break. Sunday roast, more after this, including Ken Sutcliffe. <laughs> Yes, that is what we're looking forward to this afternoon. The Dogs are taking on the Sharks here at ANZ Stadium on a beautiful afternoon. But a couple of games yesterday in Super Saturday, the first of those at Osgood Stadium at Newcastle, saw the Knights defeat the Panthers 16 points to 12. A couple of penalty goals, the difference there for Kurt Gidley. And while North Queensland are thumping 30 points to 10, win over the Warriors. But it was the last 20 minutes of the game where Jonathan Thurston stood up for North Queensland to give them that win. And Gary, you were in Newcastle last night to see a, a dour sort of a battle between two sides and in the end it was a couple of penalty goals from Kurt Kidley but I just had the impression that Newcastle was the better side on the night. I think they were the better side but the Panthers made a lot of mistakes and gave away some, some pretty dumb penalties that, that didn't give them a real chance to get in the game although you know they were they were in the game they had a chance if, if they could have held on to the football late. But we saw some, some talented stuff that Iwade got he injured his knee early in the game but played on in a bit of discomfort and did well. Ryan Stig, I thought, was, was very good. He set up that first try for Costigan. And Yusef, he scored actually two tries for the Panthers. That one sort of out of nothing mm. uh, that kept them back in the match. But yeah, the better side won. I, at 6-0, Kurt Gidley decided to take a shot for penalty goal. We're kind of questioning whether he should have done that or not. It was at 30 metres and, and wide out, but... Yeah, it proved to be a good a good decision. Well, they've had a few problems injury-wise this year. Of course, the Newcastle Knights at, in the 5'8 position. Jared Mullen has been out, uh, will be out for some time. Kurt Gidley's been on the sideline. Ben Roberts out for the season. Bo Henry suffered an injury early in the year and now has been uh, sent to the Gold Coast, which gave an opportunity last night for a man you mentioned, and we uh, spoke about it before, Ryan Stig, who uh, is a Newcastle boy, but then spent some time up in North Queensland playing for the Northern Pride. Missed out on the Queensland Cup Grand Final last year due to injury and just didn't he take his chance last night what about that sidestep that he's got he really keen to get to get to the line and back himself I, I spoke to Rick Stone before the game about him and he said he's a confident young kid and he'll he'd ask, he, he said he probably doesn't need to ask him to back himself because that's the kind of player he, he is that might have been his one and only chance in first grade and it was because Tyrone Roberts was uh, was unavailable um, it won't be the last time he plays first grade now. I think he, he showed everyone that he's, he's up to that standard he's very very good well let's hear what the captain Kurt Gidley had to say about the debutant yeah, you know, it was like he'd, he'd had a few under his belt. He, he took the line on with you know plenty of strength and plenty of confidence. Um, you know, he was dominant um, in, in, his, in his talking to the boys. So, uh, man, it's, a, it's a great start for him, his first game. Terrific uh, performance by Ryan Stig. And they're those sorts of games for Newcastle and even the Panthers that uh, if you want to make the eight and want to progress in the competition, you would pencil those games in as must win. And, and even though they did a Dugley at times, Newcastle, they did get the two points. And it's been uh, a real battle for them because they have had a number of injuries. And uh, I think Neville Costigan's starting to get a bit of uh, match fitness under his belt. They are looking reasonable to make the top eight, I think, Newcastle. Look, I, I think so. I'm not convinced about them at the moment. I liked them at the start of the year when they, they started pretty well. Um, look, they've had a lot of away games, and I looked through the program last night. They've got eight of their last 12 games at home at Osgrid Stadium. That has to be a bonus. If they can rack a couple up in a row, uh, a win next week again, they'll be well and truly in the eight. And uh, that is, you know, if you're coming home and you're in the, in the mix and you've got a lot of home games, get some confidence, get players back from injury, you'd have to say they'd be a big chance. Panthers fullback Lachlan Coote is nursing a jarred jaw after copping one of the hits of the season last night in their loss to Newcastle. Despite Jonathan Thurston carrying an injury, the Cowboys finished all over the Warriors while the Knights won an arm wrestle. In Newcastle, it was a game of missed opportunities for the Panthers. In a mistake-riddled second half, Lachlan Coote fumbled a great chance to put his side back in the match. It was going to be the try of the season. The fullback may be still dazed after this contender for hit of the season earlier on. Lachlan Coote, who was monstered. 
Penrith got to within four points, but they'd left their run too late. The Knights win, putting them into the top eight. Yes, he's a favourite son indeed and a famous name in the history of the Newcastle Knights. Uh, there's a very uh, prominent Gidley at the club now in Skipper Kurt, but it all started with his older brother, Matt Gidley, and he joins us in the studio tonight. Uh, good to have you in, Matt. Yeah, thanks, well, Impressive nice credentials when, when you roll them off the tongue. Uh, over 300 games in your career, both here in Australia and also England. Uh, 11 games for New South Wales, 17 uh, tests for Australia. Uh, did you not achieve anything that you wanted to achieve in your career? Of course, a premiership with the Knights as well. Um, yeah, I think so. I mean, I was lucky first and foremost. You know, I was lucky to play in some wonderful teams. Um, you know, lucky to get the opportunity to play for my local team, and um, you know, we had some we had some some success there. I think uh, you know, winning the grand final in 2001 was clearly probably my, my highlight. Mm. Um, something that I always want, you know wanted to do. We'd been close a couple of times prior to 2001, but. Uh, Probably took things for granted a little bit, but looking back, you know, I realised how lucky I was to play in a fantastic, some fantastic teams. Yeah, oh, absolutely, some amazing players. Yeah, great players, and I didn't have to do probably anything over than uh, over and above my job. You know, um, had some brilliant halves in both Matthew and Andrew, and uh, you know, some, some some great forwards in in uh, in the middle that did did the hard stuff. Because you us. played in the halves as, as a junior, didn't you? Before you moved yeah, out. Yeah, I, I, I spent all my time uh, in the juniors as, as a five eight and. Um, you know, just waited for an opportunity in the first grade team. It was a pretty star-studded back line and uh, an opportunity came up in the centres and, and that's where I, I jumped in and um, was lucky to hang around for a while. Mm. People sitting at home on the couch thinking, where, has, where have you been? What are you doing now? Um, well, I went to the UK for four years and played in the Super League. So, uh, again, lucky to play with, it, with a great team over there and, and played in some really big matches. Um, and um, well, we arrived back home October last year and I'm back working with the Knights now. and. Uh, yeah, I'm extremely grateful that um, you know I've got an opportunity to work back with the club and and uh, and contribute to some uh, hopefully some successful years in, in the future. And you won two Challenge Cups. Yeah, special feeling. Yeah, two Challenge Cups, and they were great. I mean, it's it's a pretty uh, it's a pretty big event over there in the in the UK, and uh, played at Wembley twice. You know, the new Wembley. Yeah. So uh, it's it's pretty. Um, you know, our, our fans were fantastic, and, and lucky to have my family fly over for the games as well. So uh, yeah, two two memorable wins down there. And what about your brother? You're watching him going around now and he played State of Origin on Wednesday night. Where do you, what position do you think he will fill in the next couple of years? Um, I, I think Kurt's pretty open to that. Um, I think uh, you know, the talk lately after the Origin game particularly was, you know, he did well at hooker. I think, um, you know, I think fullback at the moment, you know, he's doing things well and, and probably the next couple of years, um, you know, with Darius Boyd coming to the Knights, you know, he might find himself in the, in the halves. But... Uh, you know, I think Hook is certainly an option. It's it's probably up to Wayne when he when he comes to the club next year. But uh, at the moment, I think Kurt just wants to, uh, you know, wants wants to play in a winning team and, and hopefully, you know, charge in the semi-finals and playing some big games for the Knights. Yeah, you, you talked about some of the great players you've played with when you're at the Newcastle side. The young kid there that only played his first grade game last week, Ryan Steig, I thought did a fantastic uh, job on his debut. What do you make of this current Newcastle players that are out there playing now? Yeah, you know, I think. Uh, I think they've got, they've got a wonderful attitude. You know, I was lucky to spend a lot of time with the team throughout the preseason, and I saw firsthand how, how hard they work together. Um, I think Rick, Rick Stone's done a particularly good job with these boys. Um, you know, he's really well regarded among, amongst our playing group at the moment. Um, you know, I was really happy to see Ryan Steed come in and, and play super well for us last week. I think. Uh, you know, as a debutant, I know Andrew Johns on his debut scored 22 points, and, and that'll be hard to beat. But uh, you know, I think Ryan, you know, took the line on well, played nice and direct for us, and. Um, you know, and, and was rightfully awarded players player for us. Matt, is that the biggest difference you see? Like, you come in as a young guy and you had all these senior players, you know, these young guys seem to come in and just blossom. Like, like, first time he touches the ball, steps off the left, nearly makes, it makes a break, but just gets ankle tap. But they are a little bit different, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, the young boys these days seem, seem to be full of confidence. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's good. I mean, I'm super impressed with, with the young guys that come in. I think uh, as an outside back, I'm particularly impressed with the outside backs these days that come in and, um, you know, there's some wonderful finishes, you know. I mean, that, that was exemplified by, um, 
Will Hopalati in the Origin of the night. I Fantastic. thought, you know, what, what, what a what a try, what a crucial try, and a wonderful finish. And um, you know, I'm enjoying sitting back and, and clapping these boys. Hmm. And could you talk about these young blokes as if you're an old fella? You're still 33 years of age. You look fit enough to play. Hmm. Tell me, has the game changed that much in the four years you've been away from from the code here in Australia? And and could you come back and play if if you're hungry enough? Um, well, I mean, I was lucky. I, I made the decision to retire, um, you know, based on, on my own feeling. Yeah. Physically, I was fine. I was always lucky with injury. Um, but, uh, I mean, I'm really content, you know, to be, to be where I am at the moment. Um, still contributing to the club that, you know, I'm, I'm really passionate about. Um, so, How I mean, do you feel the game's changed yeah, since I, you've been away? I, I think there's, there's, there's probably a few more athletes in the team, but I don't think there's been huge changes. I think, uh, I think the successful teams are pretty well-balanced teams, you know, with, with a mixture of footballs, of athletes, of, of dynamic sort of power forwards. Um, so I think we don't have to change things too much there. Um, and I think if, uh, you know, certainly us at night, if we work to that, you know, we'd like to hope we can play in the big games as well. Super coach Wayne Bennett says, hey mate, I'm, I've just signed another mate by the name of Tahu. You had a great combination a few years ago. You mind pulling on the boots or doing a pre-season and see how you feel? Yeah, pre-season. Yeah, well, I think Tamana made me look as, as good as I made him look. But, uh, it's, You've got a lot to answer for. A lot of players pass now without looking. The Gibby <laughs> flick is there, but now they're flicking it a lot longer. But it's yeah, good, I, mean, right? it, I mean, everyone sees me doing it these days. I mean, it's, uh, it's, I mean, it's just something that, I mean, I, I, as I said, I was, I was a playmaker rather than, you know, a, a dynamic outside back. So I had some, some Ferraris outside me and Darren Albert and Tahu. So if I could make a bit of space for those boys, they, uh, they, did, they did the rest. What happens if, I, if Wayne Bennett asks you? No, well, Would you do a pre-season? <laughs> no, I mean, I could do a pre-season. I feel fine. But as I said, oh, I'm really content. I'm, I'm enjoying sitting in the crowd and clapping at the moment. Come on, if Danny Badiris can do it, you can, can't you? Yeah, I mean, he's... What about Mad Dog? <laughs> well, Mad Dog, he's, he's still doing well. He's, uh, he's, uh, I mean, he's, he's a different type of player to what I was. Didn't he make his sure. debut in 88 when the Knights <laughs> first came out? Yeah. Well, it'd be nice to get him back in injury, from injury in the next couple of weeks. Well, Petro's 45 and he's still playing. Back yeah, yeah. I, know. I watched Petro last week and I think he's phenomenal. I mean, I really yeah. take my hat off to these boys, you know. Uh, I think, uh, you know, mentally to be able to push through when, you know, both like Petro and Lockie and, and, even, and even Mad Dog as well, I think... Uh, they're pretty, pretty special guys. Yeah. Can you give us a bit of an insight into this Nathan Tinkler era that the Newcastle Knights are heading into now? We, we've spoken about Wayne Bennett and, and, and the recruitment, but uh, what about off-field? What, what about uh, in-house? How are things progressing that Knights fans should really be excited about what's happening within the club? Yeah, well, there is a lot to be excited about. I think uh, the privatisation should be completed hopefully by the end of this month. Um, they've recruited some, 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 pretty, some pretty good operators in, in, the, in the management roles uh, in, in, in administration level. So uh, it's some exciting times. Of course, Wayne Bennett's a huge coup for us. So uh, we're looking forward to get, getting Wayne up to Newcastle and, um, and hopefully some successful years to come. So what is your role specifically within the team? Um, I've been working as a business in a business development type role, um, spending some time with the team, working with the outside backs, which I've really enjoyed, um, and doing some work in the, in, in the corporate sales. Um, so I'm learning plenty, which is which is what I was hoping for. And um, you know, I'm again, I'm, I'm really thankful for the opportunity. Mate, you left the NRL pretty much in your prime. Like 29, I play with you. Like I don't think that there's a centre that can set up his winger as good as you. But do you think the NRL should do more to keep players like yourself, like? In the game, like there's Matt King, there's so many Aussies playing out there, like Denny Badiris. Like there's no way that he should have been over there for the last three years of his. I mean, Denny Badiris should retire in Newcastle where he started the game. Do you think the NRL does enough to keep the elite players here? Yeah, I'm not sure, Gordy. I mean, I can't speak on behalf of, of, of Kingy or, or Danny, but um, for me, my decision in going over there was um, I mean, I was contracted to the Knights for the following year, and, um, and they allowed me to go overseas. For me, it was my family were young, and you know, my wife and I had, hadn't really had an opportunity to travel overseas and, um, and experience you know, many different cultures. So we went over there while the kids were young and, and spent some time. We were going for two years, but yeah, then, then enjoyed it so much. You know, played with a great team. We stayed for, for another two years, and uh, but always planning to come back to Newcastle and raise our kids there. So uh, that's where we are at now. And um, you know, I, I don't think things would have, anything the NRL could or could have done you know, would have changed that. Some questions for Twitter, uh, off Twitter for you here, Matt. Um, what's the main difference between the NRL and the English Super League? Um, well, I think in the English Super League, the top three or four teams, are, you know, they're, they're pretty, pretty consistent. Um, but then things fall away pretty quickly, especially in the middle of the season when, when squad's depths are, are tested. Over here, it's just a tough gig. I mean, all teams, you know, perform well. You know, and this, this weekend's games, you know, I've shown that There's, there hasn't been a lot of tries scored and it's, a, it's really tough to, you know, to get the two points. Whereas, uh, you know, as I said, overseas, you, you can probably get away with, it, with just a couple of tough games a month. You know. What are your thoughts on the Knights recruiting for next year? 
Um, yeah, I think, well, I think guys like Darius Boyd, you know, is a huge coup for us as well. I mean, he, he, he's, he's well and truly a blue chip player. Um, you know, we'd like to promote some more local guys come through, but, um, you know, looking back, our best teams, you know, we're, we're probably based on local boys, but with some blue, blue chip players, you know, like your Benny Kennedys. Um, mm. So we're hopeful we can we can promote some guys through. Having Tamana Tahu back, you know, I'm particularly pleased about because I've got a lot of time for Tamana. Um, you know, and Cade Snowden's a local boy as well. Mm. So we're hoping we can come back, keep all these boys fit and healthy, and then, um, you know, and, and play some good footy. Mate, I'm just. When you played over in St Helens, is there a player in that team there that will come back here and fit into the NRL easily? Yeah, I'm looking forward to James Graham. I mean, we've got Sam Burgess at the Rabbitohs, you know, who's a fantastic player, and, and, and Gaz Ellis at the West, West Tigers, who I was really impressed with when he was at Leeds. Um, I think James Graham can be as good as those two boys. He's a, he's a different type of player. He, he's not as dynamic as those two boys, but he's, uh, he's a traditional front roller who... I think uh, if I was a Bulldogs fan, I'd be really looking forward to, to him coming out and playing. He, he can play some huge minutes and uh, he's really resilient. Um, he doesn't miss many games. So uh, he, he's probably what the Bulldogs are after right now, actually. So uh, I think he'll, you know, he'll be a great signing for them. Matt, sit tight. We've got a few more uh, questions to fire at you from the Fox fan phone, which we're going to fire up next. one 675 369 is the number to call. We'll be taking your calls live next on the Toyota Orion Post Game Show. Back shortly. Welcome back to the Toyota Orion Post Game Show. Let's now hit the fan phones, 1300 675 369. All right, our first caller is Ben. Hello, Ben. Hello, Ben, are you there? All right, we're just having some Fox fan phone uh, issues at the moment. Ben, are you there? Yes, hello. Hi, hello, mate. Ben. What's your question? Hey, there we go. Good, good. Uh, my question's for uh, Bat. Go, Matt. How you going? Good day. Good, thanks. I reckon you could play tomorrow if you really wanted. <laughs> Mate, um, uh, I uh, seem to remember back in Origin when you were playing, uh, you uh, were part of one of the best post-try celebrations ever in New South Wales Origin history. Do you remember that one? I think it was after a Brian Fletcher oh. try. Yeah, yeah, I know. I do remember the that grenade, one. That, that the was grenade. grenade. That was a good win. The only problem was, I think Brisbane remember. I mean, the Queensland boys remembered that in game one of the following year. They come out and exploded against us. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, I think I think we smashed them. So uh, yeah, it was good. Yeah, that was that was good. The following year wasn't so good though. Yeah. <laughs> good right, boys. You, you were an integral part there, Gids. Yeah, no, that was that was a good that was a good victory. It was your it was, idea, I think, wasn't it? It certainly wasn't my idea. <laughs> Fletch, <laughs> Fletch was in that one up to his ears. <laughs> yeah, right. but, well, they did it live on the field. That was very disrespectful. Our, uh, our next caller <laughs> is uh, Barry from Sutherland. Hello, Barry. I got a question for Matt. Yep. Um, watching, obviously, the Johns boys come through the ranks, um, you know, yourself and Kurt, how much inspiration do the Johns boys provide to you? And you must have some cracking stories about, um, uh, about situations in a match where Joey's got you out of trouble playing for the Knights through the years. Yeah, no, I mean, b both those boys had a huge influence over, uh, over not only mine and Kurt's career, but, um, you know, a lot of the local guys coming through. I think the biggest thing we learned from both those two boys was, was their work ethic. I think, uh, um, uh, you know, a lot of people thought this was all natural. They, they worked harder than anyone um, to get their skills. And, um, you know, I was lucky to, uh, you know, to play alongside with those boys for a long time. All right, our next caller is Trent from Port Macquarie. Hello, Trent. Yeah, good day, uh, Matt. How you going, mate? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. Good, mate. Uh, congratulations on a good career. Yeah, cheers. Thanks. Uh, I've got a uh, question for you and the panel. Um, just looking at the way Glenn Stewart played tonight. We're just wondering, um, you think he'd be a chance of pushing his way onto the bench and maybe Luke Lewis going into the centres to fill the Hoppawati spot? Yeah, I'm not sure. I, I think Luke Lewis could could capably fill a fill centre spot. I think he's a fantastic player um, and, and, can, and could contribute to the Blues team in a number of positions. Um, Glenn Stewart certainly put a good case forward tonight. You know, he had a great game and set up a couple of tries. Uh, it'll just be a matter of what Ricky's looking for in, you know, in, in the balance of his team and, um, and and what he's after. But both those guys, you know, will certainly be, be spoken about, I don't I'm think sure. you'd be moving Luke Lewis out of the forwards the way he's no. playing at the moment. And if I was Ricky Stewart, I'd be hunting Jamie Lyon or Matt Cooper and say, you've got to change your decision. Your state needs you for one game. A one-off game. You've got to change your mind and come back and just play But do you want to disrupt it too much? I mean, if you have to bring in a, a Josh Morris who... 
probably isn't necessarily an origin form. Uh, Blake Ashford, I guess, is is the ultra, other well, option. Blake, Blake Ashford's a right centre. Jamie Lyons a right centre. You know, you, you've got to look at, at, at the left centres available. And, and Matt Cooper, who who said he's retired, is, is probably the best available option mm. uh, if he's keen to play. I think if you ask Blake Ashford, I think he'd play left, without a doubt. Mm. And, you know, Luke Lewis, to me, is cementing himself as a lock forward or a second row. Uh, Glenn Stewart, without doubt, wouldn't be out of place. Mm. And, and you've got to remember, he's played the, like that week in, week out in 2011. That, that's how good he's played. I, I'd have him picked for sure. As a New South Wales blue, Matt, do you, do you like what's happening at the moment uh, with, the, I guess, the, what Ricky Stewart is, is trying to inject in this side, a bit of New South Wales pride and passion in the jumper yet again? Yeah, absolutely. I was, I was fortunate enough to get invited down to a dinner for the first Origin game on the Tuesday night, along with a few other ex-Origin ex players. And, um, you know, I think R Ricky's doing a marvellous job there, what he's doing at the moment. No, I was really, really happy for the boys on last Wednesday night. Um, you could see how how hard they, they'd worked. And I think they prepared well for not only last week's game, but, you know, the last few years. And, mm. you know, so it was disappointing that they hadn't been able to get the result. So uh, I was really happy for the boys. And, you uh, you know, I'm looking forward to this either. You know, it should be a huge game up there in Queensland. And, uh, you know, I'm confident the New South Wales boys can go up there and, you know, and do well again. Right. Well, uh, we've had uh, something sent into us a little different this evening, and this is courtesy of Shirley Adamson from Coombe Barber on the Gold Coast. Now, Shirley said she's a massive fan of the show, but an even bigger fan of Gordon Tallis. Now, she writes, I fell in love with the Raging Bull when I asked him for these photos of him pre-match way back in 1998, and he was extremely polite. Do you, do you remember Shirley at all, Gordy? Yeah. Do you remember I your hairline think, there at all? Or? It was quite cool. It was like cat's hair. <laughs> God, I had to wash a lot of face, didn't I? I had a you long did. face. To wash. You could have got yeah, to start on, uh, on Seinfeld with Kramer. Kramer, this <laughs> I, I, did. Like, I didn't pose for too many photos in a warm -up. I remember a New Zealand lady, if that was her, um, come up and ask for, for like a photo. Obviously, um, at Carrara, there wasn't a warm-up area. I'm at the back, so I used to run out on the field and stretching the hemis because they were getting a bit old by then, so trying to stretch the hemis and the hairline. There you go. You can <laughs> you can chalk them up, Gordy. Uh, Shirley yeah, Adamson, yeah. See, another fan. Just nice because it didn't matter until I got on the field anyway. Another fan. No, you're, you're a good you. man. I see you deal with the, the, the fans. You, you're very generous. Uh, as has been Matt Gidley with his time tonight, it's been wonderful to have you in the studio. Matt, uh, a wonderful career you've had. Uh, I guess testament to what we think about you. We, we think that you left Australia too early to go to England. We think that you retired too early. And I, I think that's a testament of how highly we think of you as, as a player. Best of luck with your involvement at the Newcastle Knights. Good to have you back home and best of luck in the future. Yeah, no, thanks, guys. It's nice to be, nice to be invited down and um, look forward to uh, the, the, the rest of your year. footy. And the comeback. <laughs> the comeback. There'll be no comeback. Mate, he's one of the best tourists ever, too. <laughs> <laughs> one of the best tourists. Oh, yeah. I have plenty to learn from. <laughs> <laughs> Matt Gidley, our, uh, our special guest tonight on the post-game show on Monday Night Footy. Back with more after this break. Lovely pictures there because this is a well-deserved thank you this weekend to the better halves of our NRL stars because it is the Women in League round. And we have a first for one week at a time, our very first female panellist. She's the wife of arguably, arguably the game's greatest player, Andrew Johns. Welcome, Catherine Johns. Thank you very much, guys. Very excited to be the first. <laughs> Maybe the only, but definitely the first. Well, it's great to have you here, Calf. Obviously, went to yours and Andrew's wedding. It was a yes. great day, and uh, Some unusual dancing. Yes, and my uh, husband, mainly. <laughs> and I wanted to um, present you with a big gold medal because um, you deserve it. Being married to Joey. Thanks. Well, we're, we're going up for nine years, so ten years, I think I get long service leave. <laughs> so I'm hanging in. Twelve months off. Another twelve months off, exactly. Yeah. Well, tell us, Kath, um, he's an interesting guy, Joey. He, you know, I, I think he's the greatest player that uh, that I've seen anyhow. Um, what's something that we don't know about Joey at home? <laughs> Keep it clean. Um, well, he does the bins every Wednesday night, 
So he's uh, he's number one. He's number one in my eyes for that. Um, he reads one or two books a week. Really? Yeah. yeah. Big reader. Um, Rugby League Week or? No, no picture books too. Proper <laughs> books, yes. What's he like during a State of Origin series? He's with the Blues in camp. How's he been at the moment? To be honest, um, uh, Andrew and I got together in 2002, so I was with him for some of his origin career, and he obviously got sort of nervous and worked up and excited, but I have never seen him as, as low in game one and as high in game two, ever. I mean, not even when he was playing was he that sort of amped up. But yeah, the, the first one, it was, it was like there was a, someone had passed <laughs> in the family. <laughs> So congratulations, Ricky, on uh, yeah, last Wednesday. Good, he's, uh, and he's promised he's going to come back into Game 3 again. And yes. It's, uh, we have a lot of the, <clears throat> the ex-legends come in and uh, we share a lot of great stories and moments. And I think that's a beautiful thing that we've all had playing rugby league, the friendships we make. And former Knight Matt Gidley's now in charge of Captain Kurt after taking the club's top job. Yeah, I, I think in a way Matt's always been the boss, been a, been a big brother. Patrick Mullohan, 7 News. Newcastle old boy and new CEO Matt Gidley will discuss the exciting future of the Knights. And now, our next guest, uh, Matt Gidley, has a stellar career uh, in Sydney with the Newcastle Knights, won comps. He's been gone about four years. He played over there in the UK for the mighty St Helens Club. And he's just today been announced as the brand new CEO of the Newcastle Knights under the Tinkler administration. Please make him welcome, Matt Gidley. Great to see you back in Australia. Yeah, it's great to be home. I mean, um, as, you, as you said, I had four years away in the UK yeah. and um, at the St Helens Club, which yeah. you're still held in high regard over there, Fatty. Um, <laughs> it's but, uh, sure. I, we, uh, I mean, we had a, we had a fantastic yeah. time overseas, but um, wonderful to be home and uh, especially back in Newcastle where all our family and friends are from. So, uh, yeah, it's good no, to be no, home. You're only 33. Um, you retired, what, about a year ago, did you? Yeah, retired in yeah. the last footy season. Okay, so, and, uh, and because you'd had enough? Or yeah, you? just had enough. I mean, we'd always planned to come back home and raise our kids in Newcastle. Um, so my daughter had already actually started school in the UK, but um, brought, her back, brought, brought everyone back home. And uh, yeah, I was just ready for something different, ready for a change. Yeah. Um, I mean, the, my body was fine, but um, I thought coming back home, you know, was a good opportunity to start something new. You've obviously been in the background while all this has happened at the Newcastle Knights, and Nathan Tinkler's bought the joint. Um, how did you get involved? Well, I guess it was a good time to come home when I did. Um, so we arrived home um, at the back end of October and got an opportunity to come back and work at the club um, as of the 1st of November. Um, in a business development type role, um, so, so that was fantastic, worked with some really good people there and um, you know, through the December period the, the privatisation bid was and the vote was, was um, underway and uh, that was all passed and um, lucky enough now you get the opportunity to work um, yeah. you know, in a CEO, CEO role um, in the footy operations. Are you surprised you got the role? I, I suppose it's a bad question but are you surprised how quickly you got this role? Yeah it probably happened quicker than I thought Dale, you're right, um, but um, I mean it's really exciting for me, I mean it's, it's probably a unique position because um, all our commercial <coughs> side of things are taken care of by the Hunter Sports Group. Yep. So my role will just be purely in the footy operations. Um, there's, there's a great team of guys in there that have worked hard for a long period of time. So um, I'm really looking forward to it. It's an exciting time, isn't it, for Newcastle when you consider, well, you, well you, Wayne Bennett, your current coach signed on for another four years. Tinkler's involved. You've got the new grandstands being built. I mean, it's just an exciting time. Yeah, it is. It's super exciting. And as I said, it's, it's, it's wonderful to be home and, and, and be a part of all this. Um, I mean, the fact that we're able to, to um, you know, sign Wayne Bennett, you know, is a huge coup. Um, you know, even the week leading up to that, you know, I was, I was still sceptical that we could pull something like that off. But I think, uh, I think Wayne would be a great fit for our region. Um, I mean, the, the type of players he wants and the type of characters he likes to have in his footy team is, is something we've, we've been trying to promote for a long time. So, uh, I mean, and having Nathan on board, um, you know, allows us to probably, you know, finally fulfil our potential as a, as a footy region. And Matty, a lot of people don't know it there, you have a Masters in Business Admin. Is this something, I know you said you came home in kind of a development role, but is this something you inspired to? Is it something that was just a shock or is it something that was in the progress of getting well, there? I, I mean, I was conscious of, of um, a career post footy gas the, the whole way going through. Um, so, you know, married pretty young and, and had my daughter when I was about 25. So I spent the back end of my 20s, you know, trying to, I mean, I was like most guys, I didn't really know what I wanted to do, but um, obviously, you know, love the nights and love footy, but... Um, the opportunity to come back and work and, and learn something different. You know, that was probably the yeah. important thing for me. So um, I've been working in the commercial side of things over the last eight months 
and um, learning plenty from the guys who, who have been recruited in the Hunter Sports Group. So, uh, you know, and I'm sure I'll, you know, I'll learn plenty more in, in this new role. Yeah. Have you done any coaching on the field? Did you? Yeah, yeah, I've been doing a bit, Freddie. Um, I spent the bulk of the preseason going down with, with, with the team, um, you know, working with the outside backs, and you know, I must say that the attitude of the guys has been fantastic, and uh, it's been a really, it's been a really good balanced role. The fact that I can go and spend some time with footy as well, and then uh, and then and move back into the office and and, and learn plenty um, on that side of the fence as well. So it's, are, it's we gonna, are we going to are we going to see a first and see the CEO train with the team? Um, in I your can, pants, doing your pants. pants and well, I can train, I can pass time. and kick. I'm, I don't fancy tackling or getting tackled anymore. <laughs> they told me you used to be a butcher. You might be able to do the barbecues for them. Is that true? Yeah, I, can do, I mean, I can do anything they like. So you were a butcher? No, Kurt's a butcher. <laughs> <laughs> Good research, research. Daryl. <laughs> <laughs> Still got it, champ. Yeah. Well, they told me your brother used to be a butcher. Is he, is he not <laughs> Kurt's a fantastic butcher. I'm not sure how good he is anymore. I mean, he still rates him pretty highly, cutting up Christmas hams, but um, I think he's pretty happy doing what he's Actually, doing at the moment. you were gone like four years. And the, the, the development of Kurt in the last four years is super, and he's turned into one of the elite players in the mm. game. Yeah, I mean, I think while I see, I must have stifled his career. So as soon as I took off, he, you know, his career went yeah. well. But, I mean, in all seriousness, you know, I'm really proud of him because, um, I mean, he, he was never the most talented kid coming through, but um, he always had... Yeah, some good character traits. He was always pretty honest and hardworking. So I think uh, that's the kind of thing you know I'm trying to promote to all the local kids in, in our area at the moment. What about the Origin, mate? Did you get down and watch it? No, I didn't get down, Freddie. I, I watched it closely on TV, and um, mate, I was really happy for the boys. Um, you know, they, they've been they've been working hard for for a number of years now. So uh, I think uh, the footy gods you know smiled on us that night. And how did you enjoy catching up with the old Origin boys before? Yeah, before, uh, that the was first great. One? Yeah, that was great. I hadn't seen <laughs> hadn't seen Gaz You're in years. fine form, mate. Eh? No, well, I did be home <laughs> early. I started work at nine the next day. <laughs> But uh, oh, I'm fortunate to get an invite to that dinner and, and see you boys. Is, um, you know, I hadn't seen a lot of you guys for a long time, so uh, it was great. And I think uh, maybe that's why they won the second one. <laughs> yeah. Mate, what about the St Helens experience? Would you recommend any player, maybe in the twilight of their career, to go over and have a few seasons over there or not? Yeah, I mean, my, my personal view, um, I, I, we had a fantastic time there. I mean, it, it takes a bit to settle in. I mean, it's a huge change and I was pretty comfortable where I was at Newcastle, but um, that was one of the reasons I decided to go. Our kids were young and it was a good opportunity. Um, I mean, I think the people in the north of England are, you know, salt of the earth people. They're, they're mm. fantastic. Mm. They love their footy. Their, their knowledge of the history of footy in the north of England is phenomenal. Um, and they're really curious about all the, all the boys over here in the NRL. So, uh, I mean, they took to our family really well. I mean, that's why we decided to stay, you know, a further two years because, uh, I mean, I can't speak whole enough of St Helens and the, and, and the people and, and the team. Mate, you, met, you mentioned before that Fatty was a former St Helens player. I think we've actually got some vision of Fatty at some of his best. There he is. Look oh, at that. Fat. Just storming over the top of them here. Look at oh, him. Go, son. Legs pumping. Oh, good ball. I, I had a great time there, actually. I loved playing at St Helens. Oh, um, they're a hit. great club. Look at the speed. Look, look at the at stepping. <laughs> <laughs> and another oh, fantastic skills. Where are you? Is that, is that you? Yeah, that's me. This, that was my first game after about a three-month layoff. I had forked <laughs> up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I struggled to get to the line there. Got a bit of big man about you there. <laughs> 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 great days, St Helens, pork pies, chip buddies. Uh, it, was a, it was a lovely place to live. I, I had a, seriously had a ball over there at St Helens. Great really? people. Yeah, it was good really good. All right. Uh, well, mate, congratulations on yeah. your job. It's great to see you back in Australia again and back on the footy show. Well done. Yeah. Matt Gidley, ladies Thank and gentlemen. You. And of course, the Knights do play the Roosters, and the Knights uh, in their current form you think would take care of the Roosters. What's happening at the Roosters, Freddie? Seriously. Well, bad last week in Melbourne, weren't they? Terrible. Or well, the week before they had a buy on the weekend. Their side looks really good this week. Uh, I know it all comes down Mate, to how they gel on the day. It looks good I know. every week. <laughs> I know. Against Knights, will be up there in Tinkler Town. Mm. They'll, uh, they'll have to play a lot better. Up the lighting, Knights! <laughs> <laughs> like this is Gidley, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Good to see. All right, well done. We'll take a break. Come back after this. Get Fats Cash. Yeah. Now Michael Hunt with a kick. It's been picked up here. Right. Down the touch by Nuwati. Thunder, lightning and Nuwati is over. Uh, there's five of us in our family. I'm the youngest one. Um, uh, two of the oldest live in Melbourne, and mum and dad still live in Fiji. I have got a daughter recently. I just she's only four months, and but um, you know I'm lucky to be here. You know I'm I'm, I'm happy that my dad brought me over and to, 
to finish school is a, is a great achievement. And uh, for me being here and you know, supporting my family is a great thing. And on debut, scores. Yeah, making my first great debut was pretty much the big thing in my life. Uh, it was the biggest achievement in my life at the start for play NRL. And, and then getting that point and you know, playing Origin and uh, playing a couple of games of first grade is, is just um, you know, it's unbelievable. Um, my career highlight was um, against the Roosters last year, um, scoring that uh, try off the kickoff. Certainly, a oh, here's a short kick taken by you, Wate, and the Quilla will get across the line. Yeah, I locked sprinting when I was young, and I still do it now. Um, my fastest time was 10 8 2. Here's Uwate, they won't catch him, but Akira Uwate gets himself a double. I heard that, you know, that I'll be the next Led Zikiri, but I just want to be the next Iwate. Um, of course, he's my idol back in the days, and I still look up to Zikiri and um, you know, all the old players that I used to look up to back in the days. Every time Zikiri tackles Iwate, Iwate gets up and pats him and says, thanks. Smiling, and I, I don't think you'll never see me angry or upset about nothing. I'm always joking around and having a good time. Now, I try not to go overboard with assessments, but I think he's on his way to being an absolute superstar. I think he's the best athlete in the game, and I would be putting money on him over any distance as the quickest player, and he will be in action for the Knights this afternoon against the Roosters. Unfortunately, his origin teammate, Kurt Gidley, is out with a hamstring problem. That's a huge blow Ooh. to the Newcastle Knights. Uh, Peter Matayutai comes on to the wing there for James McManus, who also misses the game. Tyrone Roberts goes alongside Ryan Stig as the halves. It's so a young back line. It's the youngest halves that's been for there. a while at the Knights. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, he's been out for a while, um, Roberts, with a knee injury. So he's coming back without playing for six weeks. So it's going to be a big test for him. Yeah, good forward pack there. And there's plenty of strength coming off the bench. Yeah. Uh, Rick Stone, of course, was under Brian Smith as a deputy there for three years. Uh, the Sydney Roosters. Sammy Perrett back still, eh? They come up. Sam Perrett comes back. Uh, he's only played three games this year, I think. Kane Linnett comes in for Sean Kenny Dowell, who was named. And there's, they're getting players back, so they are starting to look much more formidable, the Roosters. I wouldn't be surprised, a bit of a whisper, that Anthony Mitchell might actually be part of the 17. Um, maybe at the expense yeah, of, of Guerra bench. or Simon. Strong bench. But Mark, haven't won a game away. Six six away matches. Why can you go up there three and win to, this afternoon? Oh, look, I think it's you know what you said. We've we've got a few players back. Uh, we get Piercy and Minnie and and Milesy back in as well. So you know we're starting to get players players back in, and um, you know the boys train really well this week. So. You know, they're going up there with a bit of confidence. How's Kane? I saw him come off against Cronulla with, a, I think, sublux or dislocated shoulder. Yeah, he's been out for a while, but uh, they chose to rehab him and, and get him back. And uh, he trained strongly. He had a, a real physical session during the week to test out the shoulder, and that come up good. So, um, you know, he'll, he'll take Skidsy's place today. And this is Brian Smith's first game back up there since he left, late 2009, up in Newcastle. And uh, the, the Knights team, the ninth position going to this game. Some really solid per performances of late. In fact, you, know, you kind of know what you're going to get from Newcastle. It's a really workmanlike performance. There'll be a huge crowd up there, Stu. Yeah. The, 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 the locals love a Sunday afternoon up there. I, I think it'll be you know, 20,000 plus. What, what about the Roosters' record up there? 2001 was the last time the Knights beat the Roosters up there. Can you go back to 2001? No, can we go a year no, before? Can, before? Can, <laughs> because you, <laughs> you were both the captains of the team. What was the scoreline? 40 to 6. I, 40 I, ran to 40 out. To 6. I ran out, I had 20 stitches in my lip. Mogul Vella whacked me in the lip and I had 20 stitches and Joey's there. I thought he just had a hair lip. Just about to kick off and he's looked at me and gone. <laughs> uh, said Steve Simpson, Ben Kennedy, get on, get on Freddie. We'll have some fun I think it was tonight. 40 they beat us. A couple of decisions made in Newcastle over the last week. Rick Stone has decided to stay on for the four years as assistant coach under Wayne Bennett when he joins. And Matt Gidley last Thursday was appointed the new CEO up there in a, a really good decision for the, the Knights club. Uh, again, an indication of, of bringing everybody back into the fold up there and I think that will be very well received. Now, our Isuzu D-Max margin competition grows bigger and bigger. Last week... It was Andrew Johns who got on the board, mm. tipping the Melbourne Storm to win the game by two. They won by eight, but the home viewer and Brad Fittler went for the West Tigers. This afternoon's game, I want a, I want a, a margin and a victor. I'm going to go the Roosters. I think with the new lineup there, the few players coming back. Sammy Perrot, I think, will make a massive difference. So, by six. Joey? I'm going for Newcastle. Not because 
I love Newcastle. I think they'll get home in a tight one by one. OK. And, and, <laughs> and our home, that, third poker player. Our home viewer <laughs> is a centre Pello from Liverpool. He has gone Newcastle by 10. Just quickly, well done, Mark, who do you favour? Yeah, I think, I think we're good today, okay. the Roosters boys. You probably should say that as well. <laughs> Let's have a look at Newcastle today. They take on the Roosters. An interesting re-signing of Rick Stone with Wayne Bennett going there. Four years he's been re-signed for. Wayne's been signed for three. So there is this sort of school of thought saying that Wayne Bennett will come, Rick Stone will learn more and then get his job back, get his old job back. Bill Baxter, talk to him. Let's hope so. We'll see what happens with Wayne by the time he finishes his term. Uh, myself and Nathan have spoken a, a little bit about the whole thing, but um, both comfortable where it's at and looking forward to learn something from Wayne. What are you expecting about the experience learning from Wayne? Oh, possibly just a little bit of how he prepares his team and how he gets into their heads and you know gets the ultimate performance out of them each week. That's something that's been a stamp of his over a long, long time now and um, he, he's again doing it successfully at the Dragons. Yeah, there's Rick Stone and he'll be relying a lot on the pace of Aquila Uate. We mentioned how quick he is and how good and how strong pace is as a part of your toolkit as a rugby league player. Shannon McDonnell is a guy with plenty of pace. He's up there in Newcastle. He's not playing first grade at the moment and it's getting to a point at 23 where he's played nearly 70 first grade games that he may be forced to go to England and this is the sort of stuff that he's capable of. Shannon McDonnell, it seems like there's an opening at the West Tigers probably for where he started. But uh, a really good quality football player, Shannon McDonald, and we don't want to see 23-year-olds lost to this game when they're just starting to blossom, really. Um, so we'll wait and see whether Shannon ends up at one of the clubs. Now, a good young player up there. They're going to have to rely on these two halves if they're going to win Newcastle. Probably a lot of pressure on them today. Uh, well, uh, Billy Baxter caught up with young uh, Ryan Stig and asked him about his relationship with Mitchell Pearce in the past. Oh, actually, I played with Piercy coming through juniors and stuff like that, so I know him a little bit. And um, but yeah, just just looking forward to coming up against Carney and uh, yeah. How you reckon the Roosters have been going? They're a bit like you guys this year. They can do it good and then they can do it not so good. What are you expecting? Oh mate, they got they got a heap of really good players across their across their team. So I think it only takes sort of one week for them to click. You know what I mean? We know how good they were last week last year. So, you know, I only, only think it'll take one week for them to turn it around, yeah. Be a good game, perfect day in Newcastle. Massive crowd, so make sure that you watch it 4 o'clock this afternoon. And as we always say, check those local guides. The Sydney Roosters season is on life support after losing to the Knights in Newcastle this afternoon. The Storm beat the Warriors in New Zealand. The Panthers gave Steve Georgialis a win in his first game as head coach. While the Knights won without skipper Kurt Gidley, who's battling a hamstring injury. Feeling the beat, Aquila Uate danced all over the Roosters' defence. Uate is over for Newcastle! Neville Costigan succumbed to a cartilage tear in his right knee as the Knights ripped through the boys from Bondi. You don't stop that close! The Chooks' feathers were ruffled, playing nothing like last year's grand finalists. That's embarrassing for the Roosters! All right, let's uh, update the latest rugby league news for you. And... Nathan Tinkler has failed to meet today's deadline to pay up to $20 million to the Knights. The Hunter Sports Group has requested a six-week extension on the payment and blasted the New South, uh, Newcastle Club for making the dealings public. Sunday afternoon football, we are down to Wollongong, Wynn Stadium down there for the second match this year to be played at that part of their home ground. Uh, the St George Illawarra Dragons take on the Newcastle Knights. It is third play sixth. Mm. If the Dragons win, they will go back to second on the competition ladder. Now for Newcastle, uh, if they win, they'll remain sixth. If they lose, they could fall as far as 11th by the end of the weekend. <laughs> this is a lineup for the Dragons, uh, missing six Origin players. They do welcome back Trent Merrin um, with open arms, I would imagine. We've put him straight back into the side, probably at the expense of Michael Greenfield, and that will probably see Gower go off the bench. Still uh, a strong team. Pretty good side. Oh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. And, and, and they come in and, and get the job done because everybody knows their job. The Newcastle side, well, they're missing plenty of players, of course. Uh, no Uate, no Kurt Gidley. The young halves did a great job last week. Uh, Roberts and Stig. McManus will come into the wing for Uate. Now, you've got a bit of a doubt on one of the, yeah, the I think, props. I think Tool Mavavi, uh, Evans, I think he, I've heard he's hurt a hamstring and he might be out, so... I don't really know who will go in for him. I'd say um, maybe Kafusi will go in there. I don't know who the 18th man is there, Pete. 
I don't know, but since when do front rowers do mate. hamstrings? So that's yeah, it's a worry. Things, times have changed. Uh, Dragons, um, fantastic on Monday night, 24-6 over Manly, but again, uh, missing all these players, Mark. But you know, when they've been missing, it, it, people just slot in. And I guess the most important thing is that they've still got experienced players in the key positions. Fullback, halfback, hooker. Michael Wayman in the front row as well. Oh, absolutely, Peter. I think that uh, you're exactly right. I think the way that Wayne Bennett coaches his teams, it's all around, you know, you can interchange any players in any position, they know what their job is. So, you know, whilst I lose a bit of the, I suppose, strike with Darius and, and Gaz not being around, you know, Nightingale really fills a number one role really well. And, uh, you know, they've got Dean Young still and Ben Hornby there to give them that experience. Nathan so, Feen as and Nathan well. Nathan Feen as yeah. well playing six. It's just defensively, they just work so hard for each other. And, and look, I, I think. No Without doubt, Trent Marin, he'd be disappointed about being dropped out, but he'll be the best player on the field today. That's the sort of player he is. Now, this is a really big opportunity for Newcastle. They're, you know, they're, they're in sixth position, as I say. Uh, it could be a big fall for them. Though. I thought they were really good last week. I thought they were in trouble early against the Roosters, Freddie. But um, yeah. we know what we get from Newcastle. They're, they're hardworking. They're, they're workmanlike. They've got some, some quality players in there. But you... It, it seems to me that this is the kind of game where they have to take advantage of the Dragons being under strength. Yeah, well, I think they're just as under strength, Pete. They've got about six or seven in. You said the front rowers out this week as well, so they've got no Gidley, no Iwate. I love their young back line. You know, Le Lua, um, Utah. Stig, yeah. the Haas. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the, they started a bit dodgy last week, the Haas, but they finished really strong. That was a really good sign for them. So I think they're in a similar position to the Dragons. Some young kids having a real crack. Mm -hmm. So... It's going to be tough down there. I thought St George down there last Monday were fantastic. I think they'll roll on a little bit from that and uh, they should get the cash, I think. And of course, there's a bit of a link there now with Rick Stone coaching Newcastle. Wayne Bennett will take over. Rick Stone stays on as the assistant coach. And we just thought we'd, sh we'd show the contrast in coaches. One starting out and one uh, well into his career. Wayne Bennett, last week on Monday night, achieved his 400th win as a first grade coach. Well, Stoney's got Most no coaches draws. won't even get to 400, let alone win them. <laughs> Stoney needs a draw. Well, he's Come on, Stoney, get a draw. <laughs> 43, 20 wins for Rick Stone. And I do think it's in Rick's uh, agreement under Wayne Bennett next year that if a job comes up, which may well be the case, um, that he can, he can go and take that on. So hopefully it is a stepping stone for, for more. Now, our... Isuzu D-Max margin competition. Um, now, there's only about 10 weeks left of this. Our home viewer won last week, so that is the first person through. Now, if you can remain very, very good for the next 10 weeks, they might be the only home viewer that gets through. They'll, they'll win the car. So I guess what I'm saying is that uh, the mo it may well be that we'll only have 11 home viewers, so it's a pretty good chance of winning a, wow. a car. A car. Mm. So That's we've, a got, beauty of we've a got one too. through. So let's see what the um, what the decision is. Freddie, who do you like? I'm this going afternoon? with the Dragons, the home team. I'm going to go by eight. Dragons by eight. Yes. I can't. Jo say, Joey, I can't, can't say. He results. can't say. It. I still like this. You're going with your your head and not your heart. I apologise, everyone and from Newcastle. No, no you don't. It's your yeah. opinion, yeah. and that's what people want to know your opinion. <laughs> that's my that's opinion. I just oh, the coal miners! Hey, have a look at the coal miners stick together today. Yeah, you can tell he's in the North Shore of OK, our home viewer, Kevin Scott from Mermaid Waters up in Queensland, has gone for the Knights by eight. So if the Knights do win this afternoon's game, Kevin, you'll be the right. second home viewer through. <laughs> to be a part of this competition, like I say, it's a great chance to win a, a wonderful uh, car from Isuzu U. This is how you enter. Yeah, welcome back to the Sunday Footy Show, and it is time for us to go around the grounds with Tim Gilbert. Now, Adam McDougall, he won't be there today in uh, against the Dragons for the Knights, but uh, he's hoping and very confident he'll be back before the end of the year because uh, things haven't always gone so right for Newcastle players wanting to retire on their terms. Yeah, look, we've, uh, there's been a bit of a curse at Newcastle the last few years. Uh, obviously, uh, Paul Harrigan, Denny Badiris, Andrew Johns, uh, a lot of the great players haven't had the opportunity to finish um, on their feet. They've had to retire before the end of the year, so... Uh, you know, maybe um, some people thought that the curse had struck me as well, but, um, you know, all things are going well medically. Uh, the, the staff's pretty confident I'll be back um, in a couple of weeks. And a tough time for you personally recently with the passing your father. We feel for you on that. Did, did that uh, hinder your recovery at all in getting back on the field? Oh, look, you know, there was probably a stage there where, um, you know, I probably didn't know if I wanted to play football anymore, but, uh, you know, the break's been good for me. It's, it's rekindled a bit of um, enthusiasm again and... Uh, you know, I'm really um, looking forward to, to finishing my career on a good note and, um, you know, I think that that's what he'd want. 
Good on you, Mag. A really likeable bloke, and uh, not many football players you get talking to your thighs these days. We need him back at least to end on his terms. Now, Neville Costigan, hasn't he been good? And uh, been good for every team he's played for. Uh, Wayne Bennett, well, he's going to be back with him again this time. It's about the third club. Yeah, no, you can't get away from him, but um, no, it'll be good, you know, him and Rick Stone um, coaching together next year, it'll be something awesome, Rick's been real good for us this year, and, you know, um, him and uh, Wayne will, you know, form a good, you know, coaching combination next year, which will be good for us anyway. You think personality-wise, uh, Wayne and Rick will go together really well? Yeah, definitely. They both all got, got so, sort of the same, you know, uh, personality and down to earth, and um, would be good for us. And um, especially with Wayne, the, um, the old long neck would be good for us too. <laughs> See, well, he, he's bra he's a brave man, brave man. Never cost again. Right. Well, Joey Check comes items. on the show today, and it's very appropriate when you when you get down to do the analysis and try and predict what's going to happen this afternoon. Knights and the Dragons. It's amazing. The Dragons win just about every time they play in Newcastle, and Newcastle seem to have very little trouble beating the Dragons wherever the Dragons want to play. And the last time they played in Wollongong was 2006, round five. Who was the star? Andrew Johns. Right from the kickoff, forces a mistake from the Dragons. Knights go on to win this night, 54 to six. In Wollongong, Joey, what do you remember of the night? Um, that's a long time ago, Bossy, <laughs> but uh, everything just clicked, especially late, playing in the special team. Actually, I remember Brian Carney, this is the worst pass ever. Look at that, straight arms. Irish people should never pass a football, but uh, now everything clicked. Some, some great players playing around, Matthew Gidley and Danny Vadiris. That's good memories. Yeah, well, and Nathan Brown said after the game, Andrew Johns, what, what can you say? He just had one of those on nights, and uh, it's not often that the Dragons get touched up by 50 down in Wollongong, but uh, there's only one player, actually, who's in the Newcastle side that night. Kurt? No. no. Who's playing today? Who's playing Kurt today? Reynolds? No, playing today. No, God, Kurt Reynolds. up. Who? Dan Toller. Oh, really? Dan Toller was playing. So there there you there's go. only Beginning one out. problem with that comparison you made from mm. you know, the, the clash this afternoon compared to that yes. clash is that Joey and all those other legendary players no, sure. <laughs> aren't quite there for Newcastle. So I can't see the tenuous link between that night at Wynn Stadium in this afternoon. Here I am building it up and you want to spoil so, it, TK. No. I'm just giving a bit of fear. We're comparing apples with oranges here. Hi again, welcome to Sports Tonight. Newcastle has stunned the St George Illawarra Dragons in Wollongong this afternoon. The Knights withstood a late fight back to get home 14 points to 10. The Sharks made easy work of the Rabbitohs. Missing a host of stars to origin duties, the Dragons were hoping for a good start. And has been dropped by Nathan Fiend straight from the kickoff. Only good defence kept the Knights from scoring first points, which eventually went the Dragons' way right on half-time. The home side continued to dominate possession, but two quick tries from the Knights saw the game turn around. First, Keith Lewis scored, then Ryan Stig gave the visitors the lead. A penalty conversion from Wes Naguama extended the lead and not even a late try from the Dragons could bridge the gap. The Premiers suffering a third loss from their last four games. Blues coach Ricky Stewart has told the players who are in the starting team for Origin 3, but no one else knows at this stage. In round 17 of the NRL, the Panthers beat the Bulldogs last night, while in today's action, the Sharks made it three from three for the first time in two years, and the Knights upset the Dragons at home. Next year, the Knights are Bennett's team. Today, they were a headache, blocking two more Premiership points. Late contact and high. It's going on report. Hilda in trouble for a shot on Fiend, while the only try in the first half came from slick hands. But with so many key players on origin duties, the Dragons were vulnerable, and Newcastle didn't blow a crucial opportunity. Ryan Stig has got across for the Knights! Uh, also today, a bit of action down there, of course, at the, well, not quite revamped uh, Wynn Stadium, but it's getting there. The new stadium uh, will be finished sometime soon, we think. Uh, we were down there on Monday night, of course, and then Keith Lalea today scores a try for Newcastle, playing against the Dragons. Got himself uh, knocked out. 
in the process, a former dragon himself, and well, not quite knocked out, but certainly badly concussed. Uh, it was a pretty good effort, actually, to break through the tackle there. Jason Nightingale comes across, couldn't quite get to him, and then Keith says, yes, there's the ground, and puts the ball down. But as you're about to hear, um, when he got back, he had absolutely no idea what had just happened. Listen to what Keith had to say to the trainers when he got back to the uh, Newcastle Knights bench. Did you see the smile on his face yeah. when the trainer yeah. said yes? yes. 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 Well, how cool is that? <laughs> What's wrong with the world? Yeah. You, know what I mean? <laughs> it's great. you get to you get the score the try and then oh I find out later you score you get to celebrate again. It's you fantastic. should get double for that, shouldn't you? You should get yeah. double. You could score a is try it? unconscious. Mm. Yeah. That's gotta be worth more than that. You get consciousness points. But and then, then he still controlled the ball too. Yeah, it's he brilliant. And then he said to the trainer after that, he goes, Do the other guys like me? <laughs> am I popular? Is am I a nice guy? How much money am I on? There's <laughs> <speaking. laughs> Speaking of money and uh, the Newcastle Knights, that has certainly been a topic uh, this week, hasn't it? The Newcastle Knights, of course, had until June 30, which was an extension of their original deadline. Uh, so, oh, sorry, Nathan Tinkler mm. had until June 30 to come up yes. with the, uh, the cash to make sure everything was sorted as far as the takeover of the club was concerned. Uh, it didn't quite uh, work out that way. There's an, a new extension now, and there's been a bit of back and forth between the Newcastle Knights board and also uh, the Tinkler group. Uh, the headline Fox Sports com.au was mining magnate Nathan Tinkler fails financial commitments Newcastle Knights takeover in disarray well we'll wait and see but it's not not going quite as swimmingly up there as it was supposed to be despite the good win on the field today and you just got to wonder um, you know is there as much money here Did he, can he get his hand on the money as quickly as he well, needs you've just to wonder. you've just got to wonder <laughs> there, what are a few question, there are a few question yeah. marks hanging over the whole deal at the moment well, well, and, and and his people are saying we didn't realize Newcastle were in as much debt no, mm. They weren't telling the truth. Now, the original debt was around three and a half million. Uh, but this deal has been going on for some time now. Yes. Do, has Tinkler's men, haven't they not been looking at the books? Did they all of a sudden get a surprise and go, oh, you've got more debt than we realised? Mm. Right, really? What's going on? Mm. I think it's, it's a little bit fishy. But fishy. Is that, is that a like little bit funny. Brendan popping up is to it? Cronulla Sharks and saying, I'm going to buy you guys the, the whole club. <laughs> yep. Here's an IOU, mm. and then Brendan's a couple of weeks you just get. I said I'd yeah. buy them if you, they did F Pos. Right. They said <laughs> we don't do F Pos, and I said when you get F Pos, I'll, I'll buy you. Yeah. And so I'm just waiting for yeah. the email. <laughs> but look, I, I mean, I'm concerned about the, uh, the the Tinkler situation, whether he's going to be able to afford the uh, the night. So um, myself and the Brendan's List Research Group, <laughs> we've had a big think tank this week in a uh, in an office in Mildura. And uh, we've come up with some other reasons how Tinkler can, you know, make the excess, make the extra superfluous, uh, the, the money that's owing. And uh, that's this week's Brendan's List. <laughs> Brendan's List. Right. Well, the first, the first incentive reason strategy we've got for the Tinkler Hunter group to find the extra money is simply don't have Ferraris. Because <laughs> uh, if you don't have a Ferrari, no one can burn your Ferrari out and leave it on the side of the road. And perhaps a Tarago would be a more suitable car. <laughs> um, look, apparently uh, Newcastle has the world's best pies. So there's been a suggestion of a pie-eating competition uh, featuring the Tinklo Group, sponsored by Cenobet. Don't just eat it. Bet on it. <laughs> <laughs> That'll um, work. What do you think? That'll work. Oh, it's got a ring to it, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. The third reason, the third, the third strategy incentive is there's money to be saved in Darius Boyd's fee, because even though Darius Boyd refers to himself in the third person, you only have to pay him once. <laughs> <laughs> Just think about that for a second. <laughs> All right, there we go. Um, now, this is this is a really interesting one, and one I think they should employ imminently. For player toughness and also for economical player usage, um, get the Knights to actually train in the coal mine. Uh, that way you're making the Tinkler group thrive and you're also getting the Knights fitter. And um, they're going to be virtually unbeatable in night games. Uh, and the fifth and last one... Uh, the the There's a couple of slow burners tonight, eh? Yeah, <laughs> it's a dreamy list this week. Um, but I'm enjoying it. Uh, the, the, fifth, uh, the, fifth, the fifth way they can make the excess money is sell the, new, the Newcastle Jets. 
Um, there's fifteen dollars right there, um, and I think you can put that and Wayne and Wayne's wage on the first in Randwick. Um, and if you put it on the first in Randwick, just have a race there where it's only Nathan Tinkler's horses racing, and that mm. way everyone's a winner. And that's week, that, this week's Brenner's <laughs> list. Big day. <laughs> that is super. Boy, that's what an afternoon down there at Shark Park will do to you, hey? Look, I think there's some very good reasons, and I hope they're listening. I hope, I hope they're tuning in. Oh, I think they will be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 They'll be sitting here with the yellow legal pads taking yeah. those notes taking down, notes. Uh, without question, of course. Now, Newcastle, Blocky, they take on the Jonathan thurston -less North Queensland Cowboys. Well, Andrew, I'm going to put it out here and put it out now that they are going to be the big improvers in the Premiership. They've got Mullen back into the side in the halves. I'll tell you how good they're going. Ryan Stig over the last couple of weeks has been an outstanding for, fine for them. He's on the bench. Now, they are going to be the big improvers this Newcastle Knights side. I can't wait to see their run into the semi-final. I think they're in eighth position at the moment. So uh, a top four position for them, not out of the question. Well, it's a Jonathan Thurston a thon here. If the captain is out, these guys have had a wonderful season, the North Queensland Cowboys in fourth position at the moment. But Joel, I don't think there's any hope without uh, Jonathan Thurston. He orchestrates everything there for the Cowboys and he is the biggest miss in the NRL. I agree, Blocky, but uh, you mentioned uh, the Bloomers being the Knights. I agree. Six of their last nine games are at home and they've got a few uh, so-called of the easy teams as well. So I think they'll be flying home. Well, we had Steve George Arliss in here before at Penrith, who's not going to be at Penrith next year. As coach, Rick Stone, of course, doing a wonderful job with the Knights. He's making way for Wayne Bennett. And Rick Stone will join us, incidentally, here on the game plan next Thursday night. A little bit of action from Trent Merrin again. He gets his second run. We find out he's got a leg fetish. He grabs hold of Matt Hilda's leg, carries him upfield. Trent Merrin, what is doing? The Knights, an interesting dance against the Dragons. Yeah, watch it. If we put it to music and we muck around with a vision, backward and forwards, that's very funny stuff. Keith Lalia scored a try last Sunday while concussed and gets off the field and they have to tell him he actually scored. Listen to this. Sensational. miss. And uh, there's another game. The Knights at home to the Cowboys. The Knights, uh, and especially now with John and Thurston mm. out, the Knights have firmed in courtesy yeah. of Centibet, and there's the uh, prices there. Huge competition points last week for them against the Dragons. Yeah, massive. And they got six of their last mm. nine games up at Osgood Stadium. So uh, they, that's big. Yeah, going yeah. great games. And they're Freddy? starting to get a few back too. Yeah, well, they? yeah, they were good last week. The Knights. They were good. <laughs> Slow, <laughs> Slow. Slow. <laughs> Welcome back to the show. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we miss you. Put me through the banner again. Can you uh, run that again? Is <laughs> <laughs> that banner footage? No, can we run that? No. Lucia, no. Shane, can you run up. that banner footage for us? At least you take the pressure off me, Snorky. <laughs> nah, <laughs> not really. No. Well, who do you who do you tipping, Mario? <laughs> <laughs> I'm tipping the Knights, mate. Uh, why? <laughs> oh, this is outstanding. Oh, that's actually funny, the little. <laughs> yeah, I'm tipping the Knights. I'm tipping the Knights, mate. But we've got a chicken. Is there a chicken somewhere? Oh, a chicken now. We've got a chicken. Daryl? Well, you're a super chicken. I can't so. do a chicken, no. I can't do a chicken. <laughs> I didn't know. <laughs> no, no. no, no thirst or no wind. There's chicken. <laughs> Oh, I'm not super chicken, right. I can tell you. We'll take, a, take another break on this fantastic show. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back in Well, tonight we take it in Newcastle to complete round 18, including Jared Mullins' return from injury. Will a killer, the thriller, put on a show from Tinkler Town tonight as they take on former teammate Corey Patterson. He's now 
a cowboy. The visitors could also have another big name back in Willie Tonga. Can he spur on the Cowboys? You'll find out right here. It is 5th versus 6th, Newcastle and North Queensland on Monday Night Football. Great to have your company on Australia's Sports Leader. I'm Ryan Phelan and with me on Monday Night Football, as they always are, the dream team of Gordon Tallis, Gary Freeman and Wayne Pearce. Looking forward to this one, boys. Obviously, a, a massive dynamic change now with Jonathan Thurston injured after State of Origin on Wednesday Night, Junior. Yeah, sad for the Cowboys because he's been playing so, so well for them all year. Uh, not only is Jonathan Thurston out, but Jared Mullen back for, for the Knights. So uh, that, the, the Knights really strengthen in that key playmaking role, whereas uh, the, the North Queensland side, you know, Ray Thompson's probably going to have to step up and do a lot of the directing, and he's still a young player. Mm. What about Jared Mullen's return, Wiz? Obviously, uh, this is a guy that has brought so much to this Newcastle side, and the fact that they're you know, trying to entrench themselves in the top eight, uh, his return is a very timely one. It is, because he's been out for four weeks and uh, to come back from the injury that he sustained where they s suppose he said that he tore his pec muscle, I find it quite amazing. So the work that they've been doing off the field to get him back onto the field has been fantastic. Ryan Steig still gets an opportunity on the bench, so that's just covering both the halves if someone does come up with an injury or he doesn't get through. I think it's great he had to the King game, but also the dynamic part of his game is running game. All right, let's get some team news for tonight's clash. Andy Raymond has the latest from Osgrid Stadium. G'day, Andy. So the Melbourne Storm sit atop the competition ladder after 18 rounds. It was 12 months ago that club was brought to its knees with the salary cap scandal. It also saved the North Queensland Cowboys the wooden spoon. For two times in the last three years, the Cowboys have finished in 15th place. In 2011, they're the big improvers and going along smoothly until last Wednesday night when Jonathan Thurston's leg came within millimetres of being snapped. He's out for six weeks, as you said, Ryan. Where do the Cowboys go from here? Can they continue or do they crumble? We might have some answers tonight as we take a look at the way the two sides will take the field here on Monday Night Footy. And we'll look at the home side first, the Newcastle Knights. And no changes to the back line. Naguama, McManus, Sow and McDougal and Uate, Gidley and Mullen are the new look halves combination. There is one change in the forward pack. Evan Tulmavavi is out. Big Dan Toller will play some starting minute football. It means the bench is Stig, Kafusi, Seraldo and Tafua. The coach is Rick Stone. Now there's changes are plenty to the side that was named last Tuesday by the North Queensland Cowboys. No seven and no nine. No Thurston and no Payne. In 19, Michael Morgan replaces Jonathan Thurston and Clint Amos in 22 replaces Aaron Payne. The bench now reads Seguiaro, Reef Mueller, Sims and also Corey Patterson playing against his old club. The coach is Neil Henry. I caught up with both he and Rick Stone a short time ago. Rick Jared Mullen, a welcome return. So to Kirk Gidley. Yeah, two important players, both in the halves. Our young halves have been doing well for us, but some have, have some experience, and particularly Mullow's kicking game will be important for us tonight. Three successive wins. What's pleased the coach most? Oh, probably the resolve in our D. You know, that's been important. Uh, we've, we've toughed out some good games, and but, um, you know, the, the probably the real strength in our wins has been our defence. Where are you still concerned? What needs to improve tonight? Well, we probably need to improve in our attack. We've struggled a little bit to score points of late, which is not really us usually. We usually can score points. It's probably a matter of um, stopping some points, but we need a little bit of improvement there and hopefully we'll get a chance tonight. Let's join the team in Newcastle for all the latest. It's a very good evening to Warren Smith, Greg Alexander and Laurie Daly. G'day, boys. Thanks, guys. Of course, here we are, fifth versus sixth tonight in this NRL battle between the Cowboys and the Knights. And had you been here three or four seasons ago and said Jonathan Thurston was out of this side, you said, well, the Cowboys, they are pretty much no chance. But things have turned around, of course, up there in Townsville. They're a much better side this season. They have been in past seasons, of course. Matty Bowen is playing back to somewhere near his best. The forward pack is so much better than it has been in recent seasons. And there's, I think, a real belief about what they can do this year. Of course, Thurston's loss, that really hurts. But they're a chance in this game. 
don't write them off yet. No, you're right. And you're right about uh, some of their players being being in career best form. Matt Bowen's back to the sort of form we saw him in a couple of years ago. Uh, you mentioned their forward pack. Uh, Tamo up front, along with the best front rower in the competition, uh, Matty Scott. They're in good form. The loss of Aaron Payne will hurt them also. And that combination that he has with Matt Bowen and Jonathan Thurston. The back row have been outstanding. They've got a strong bench. Corey Patterson will make his debut against his old club. So th there's a lot to play for. And they could secure a fourth spot, jump back into the top four with a win. Although the Knights deserve favouritism with those players out, I think we've got a match here tonight. Now, Loz, of course, when Jared Mullen left the field, he back in round 12 clutching his chest. We feared the worst and thought his season may well be over. But he's only missed four games with a pectoral muscle injury. It's remarkable he's back so quickly. A real bonus for the Newcastle Knights. Well, it certainly is. He forms a great combination with Kurt Gidley, and that's been a key to their success over the years. While they've won three out of the last four games without Jared Mullen, their attack has suffered somewhat. So him being in this team will certainly give them more direction. He's got all the skills, Jared Mullen. He possesses a great kicking game. He, he can produce the 40-20 when it's required. Probably has the best right-to-left long pass in the game. And he can get his support players on the outside of their men. And I love it when he plays direct and he plays fast at the line because he can certainly trouble the edge defenders and he can trouble the middle third defenders. So it's a real bonus for the Newcastle Knights have it, having Jared Mullen back into this team. And here he is coming onto the field as the Knights just emerge from the dressing room here at Osgrid Stadium to get ready for this one. Let's hear from Jared Mullen now because earlier on he caught up with Andy Raymond. Jared, welcome back to footy. How's the injury? 100% or close enough? Yeah, close enough, mate. But uh, you know, I wouldn't be playing if I didn't think it was right. And uh, got through a couple of weeks of pretty strong training. So, uh, yeah, confident going in the game. What's impressed you most about how the side's been going over the last six weeks without you? Oh, definitely their defence. Um, you know, attack still has, has got a bit of work to do, but um, there's no secret we're building our, our wins on our defence. And um, I think we've only sort of let in you know, two tries each game. So if we can keep doing that tonight, um, you know, go a long way winning the game. Against the Cowboys, what do you need to do well here tonight? What needs to improve? Just start well, I think. Um, you know, there's a side that uh, likes to come in the blocks well and, and blow sides away. So if we can start well it's, um, you know, and lead into half time, I think that's going to go well to win the game. Yeah, it's a real bonus, of course, for the Newcastle Knights to have Jared Mullen back on deck here tonight to take on the North Queensland Cowboys. Of course, they have some good defenders in this Newcastle Knights lineup, but perhaps no better of them as far as guys who can really hit and, hit and really hurt an attacker is Joel Edwards. Boy, the sex knock go at junior. He can really tackle and hurt players, can't yeah, he? When they're looking for inspiration, Joel Edwards has been supplying it uh, courtesy of his defence. And uh, we, we thought it was worthwhile showing some of the big hits that he's pulled off uh, this year because I, I bet there's some Cowboys or he'll be certainly looking to, to put some uh, stingies defence on this Cowboys forward pack which we have spoken about how well they are playing. Uh, Joel Edwards who is developing as a ball runner and a ball player at the back of the scrum uh, but his strength is his defence and he's been, uh, he's been enormous in that area so far this year and uh, I'm sure I'll have a couple of the Cowboys uh, you know, peeking sideways to just watch where he is in the line tonight. Yeah, boy, he will uh, open some eyes. There's no doubt about that if he is uh, getting up out of the line quickly as the uh, Cowboys work it out of their own end in particular. Well, Newcastle has a dominant record against the Cowboys in Newcastle, winning 10 of their 13 encounters. The Cowboys' last win at Osgrid Stadium was 34-18. to 18. That was round 24, 2007. So statistics are against them tonight, but what is also against them is they're without their inspirational uh, halfback in Jonathan Thurston. Can uh, they do it without him tonight? We'll find out shortly. Let's rejoin the team up there in Newcastle for their tips tonight. Was we'll start with you. Yeah, no JT makes it very tough for the North Queensland Cowboys, doesn't it? I'm going to take the Newcastle Knights, but by no flash margin. Yeah, look, even though we spoke about the Cowboys being in good form, uh, some of their players in career best form, you just can't go the Cowboys without Jonathan Thurston. Newcastle with Gidley and Mullen back in the halves. Yeah, look, they've lost their last five without Jonathan Thurston and the Newcastle Knights have had seven home games here at Osgrid Stadium and they've never lost a Monday night game here. So all those stats point to a Newcastle victory. OK, boys, have a good call. Uh, we'll head back to you shortly. Let's go to our sideline eye, Andy Raymond. Andy, who are you tipping? 
Yeah, the trend continues. Uh, the Cowboys can cope better in 2011 without JT. Not tonight, though. Throw me down from the Knights. Late news, boys, from the dressing rooms. I think they've stolen the Panthers' Roosters' game plan because both sides, they're talking about scoring more tries than their opponents tonight. <laughs> it's a great game plan. It's a very good game plan. You're so funny, Andy. <laughs> you, get your, yeah. you get your own material. That's um, funny. At least it was inspirational, what I said. Gordy, who are you tipping? <laughs> who do you think will score more tries than the opposition? Oh, look, I think Newcastle. It's very oh, hard. No. Look, if uh, if Aaron Payne and Tarek Sims are in, I'd probably still lean towards the Cowboys. But uh, with Thurston out um, and those other two, I think it's just a mountain too big to climb in Newcastle. Wizard? Oh, if someone was in, I would have picked him, blah, blah, blah. No one cares. They're not playing. I'm going for Is the Newcastle side. I'm going for Is the Newcastle side. I think they'll be too strong tonight, too much to play for, and they will win. Oh, look out. Monday night football, pokey, curse, alert, junior. Uh, yes, I'm, I think uh, Newcastle <laughs> will... It's so hard. We'll score more tries. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. The pokey curse is in effect. Pokey curse is in effect because I'm going for the Newcastle Knights. E don't like the pokey curse on Monday night. Now, before we get to TAB Sports Bet, um, a couple of people have had multis. One multi uh, to win uh, 66000 Another multi to win just under $100,000. Um, investments of $400 and $100, respectfully. If Newcastle win this game tonight, by 13 to 18 points. So there you go. Could be uh, uh, some some uh, big winners out there tonight. Comes to the short side. Patterson! What a return to Newcastle! You better believe it. Corey Patterson. And he says to the crowd, I can't hear you. Where are you now? Yes, a nice get square there tonight for uh, Corey Patterson. Great to have your company on the Toyota Orion post-game show. A win for the Cowboys tonight. A big upset on the road in Newcastle. 22 points to 12 over the Knights. And don't forget, we've got Queensland origin legend Trevor the Axe Gilmeister. He's going to be in with us uh, shortly to talk about his career. And we'll have a look back at the Maroons in uh, Game 3, wrapping up another series victory on Wednesday night. Trevor Gilmeister to is uh, going to be tonight's special guest. Uh, he'll be joining us shortly but for now let's hear from the Knights, Coach Rick Stone and 100 Gamer Dan Toller with him this evening. <laughs> Rick, not what you're looking for tonight performance wise? No, for sure. Very disappointing to be honest. But um, look, the Cowboys play well. You know, they turned up with the right sort of energy. Um, lim limited their mistakes and um, we made too many. Uh, lacked a bit of respect for the ball and possibly even a bit of respect for the opposition. Was the side down a little from where you sat? Yeah, probably. Uh, look, we've had a couple of tough, tough weeks in real grinding wins. It's taken a lot out of us physically and emotionally. But um, look, we had our chance to win. There was enough. It was a quick game. It was a pretty open game. And, um, you know, we made enough half chances for ourselves, particularly in the first half, and we failed to capitalise on some of them. It probably, probably hurt us in the end. How's it going, mate? Look, he's probably got a little grade one sort of hammy strain, similar to what he had before the Origins sort of game. It kept him out of um, a game a couple of weeks ago before Origins. So, look, it's going to be a tough gig for him to back up inside a week. We play Manly on Sunday, but uh, we'll reassess him in a, in a couple of days and see where he's at. But uh, I'd say he'd have to be doubtful for, for this week on Sunday. Was Brian's performance when he came on pleasing Rick and knowing that he can step up if need to be this weekend? Yeah, for sure. You know, Stiggy showed that he's capable of playing first grade. And he's nice and sharp, plays nice and direct. You know, had a couple of couple of cracks at him, set up obviously Kurt's second try, and um, you know he showed that um, he's got the sort of composure that it needs. Uh, obviously, that wasn't ideal um, today. With, with 16 errors to eight, I've got it down. So the Cowboys just you know value possession a little bit better than us tonight. Dan, difficult out there. I mean, it was there to be one? Yeah, definitely. Um, we were, we were right in at half time and we, um, after all the mistakes we made, but we still came out after in the second half and made the same errors. So mm. by the end of it, we just ran out of juice and um, yeah, we couldn't compete. Even without JT, they play quickly, don't they? They did. They, they, they came with the right attitude. They, um, they probably did to us what we did to Dragons last week, yep. um, under strength and came out there with the right attitude and played good footy and, and uh, completed well and uh, they, um, they deserve the win.
Must have been hard to see Pato, who you assumed was going to be here for the whole season, score a try and set one up for them. Oh yeah, it's probably disappointing, mate. But I'm past that. He's moved on. I think we've moved on. You know that that's the case in in the modern game, and you know some of those things that happen. You know in our game. Um, these days, but um, good luck to Pato. You know, I'm, I'm pretty good mates with him, and I'm happy to see him do well. Obviously, not at our expense, but you know, we, we deserve what we got tonight. What did you make of his performance? Oh, he, he was good. He hasn't played for a while. Um, oh, I probably think he's a bit underdone, Pato. But um, as usual, he showed some nice touches. He's got some skill and come up with an important try for his team. So I think he'd be pretty satisfied and pretty happy with himself. Do you feel like you're able to get momentum? At the moment, Rick, I mean, you, see, you guys have had a lot of tough wins the last month. He's getting a nice couple of comfortable ones under your belt at this time of the year. Going to be important? Oh, look, for us, I suppose it's important to sort of win some games. And we, we have been recently. And we, we, like I said, it's taken a bit out of us mentally and physically the last few weeks. We've had a lot of tough, grinding games. Uh, one thing we have done, though, is respected the footy and give ourselves a chance to make sure if the opposition's going to beat us, they've got to. They've got to beat us themselves and I thought there was a little bit of us beating ourselves tonight. Um, don't get me wrong, the Cowboys played well and um, they respected the footy and played an up-tempo game and, and, and definitely, um, you know, definitely played right up to their potential and they already deserve two points. Stoney, you've struggled to score points even in the wins that you've had um, and maybe looking to, to expand your attack a little bit. Maybe that proved a little bit costly tonight with the guys throwing some passes they probably shouldn't have. I don't know about that, Baz. I think we made enough half chances in the first half. I reckon we made more half breaks in the first half than we have in the last four games, to be honest. And um, we probably lacked a little bit of composure and getting the ball in the right places at times. And, um, you know, that was that was a bit disappointing. We spoke about that at half time. We thought that if if we capitalised on some of the half breaks that we made, we, we could have scored a few more tries in the first half. And, um, you know, then obviously turning the footy over, we just allowed the Cowboys deep in our territory. You know, I thought we were a little bit sloppy on some tidying up the kicks at the back. You know, obviously led to sort of one of their tries. And I, I just thought at times, you know, he didn't show the same sort of urgency as the opposition did. What do you think of uh, Adam McDougall, first game back? Oh, a bit rusty, I reckon, mate. You know, some of the service he got wasn't ideal. Um, you know, it's the first game for a long time, I think. What was it, about round five, I suppose? Might have been the last time he played. Um, you know, he looked sharp and looked dangerous at times when he got the ball in open space. But um, there was a few things in his game that he wouldn't be, wouldn't be happy with. And, you know, that comes with, um, you know, continuity of playing each week. Uh, back this week, you've got a tough decision there, I suppose. Oh yeah, you know, obviously we have to assess where Keith's at and assess where Dukes is at and make a decision on the back of that. Thanks, gents. Rick Stone and with uh, 100 gamer Dan Tolar there tonight. Let's check the ladder at the end of round 18 and uh, the Cowboys now firmly entrenched in the top eight. Newcastle, they're still there in seventh spot, but uh, that win was a little bit of a slip up for them tonight. They do have a very good run home. They have a lot of home games, which is a massive advantage for Newcastle. Uh, next week uh, in rivalry round, they take on Manly on Sunday. That's a very, very tough game though for them, isn't it, Wiz? Uh, that's a massive game, especially with the way the Eagles defend and they can attack from anywhere. Then they got the Sharks, who aren't the pushovers they used to be. And then the Titans, you know, and you know, when you lose so many games, they get closer and closer to your first win. So those next three weeks are going to be so important to the Newcastle side, along with the, the Cowboys who've got Tigers, Titans, Panthers. Mm. So let's talk Monday Night Football, and it was Newcastle hosting North Queensland at Osgrid Stadium. Here is the scoreboard for Crown Lift Trucks. And no thirst and no problem for the Cowboys. 22 to 12 over the Knights in a real upset there. An inter interesting name on the scoreboard, Corey Patterson scoring the match winner for the Cowboys, of course. He is a former Knight. Ricky? Yeah, I, I thought Thompson, uh, Matty Barn, and young Seguiaro really took control over the last 20 odd minutes. Probably longer, a little bit uh, longer, probably 30 minutes in that second half. And really had great control of the game. And they, um, uh, we see some great skill there. That was really. Reminded me of, of a uh, catch on the boundary, didn't it? Throwing it back into the uh, inside the rope and taking it and catching. Um, but no, they, they were very strong, especially in the second half. I think a little bit uh, messy in the first half, Cowboys, which was mentioned at the halftime break, but they, they came home well. well. It was a very loose game, you know, particularly in defence. Um, a couple of stats. Uh, Cowboys missed 45 tackles 
which is unheard of. So, um, especially when you win. The, yeah, the, the Knights were um, finding plenty of space, just couldn't get the points in the end. And, and the Cowboys, to their credit, stayed in the contest. Uh, I, I can't say that they built pressure. They just kind of didn't go away. And in the end, it was the uh, the efforts of this young bloke, Seguiaro, and a couple of other key players. Uh, take take you know, a look at this from Corey Patterson. Look at his reaction. Of course, he was at Newcastle for half the season. He was, wasn't part of Wayne Bennett's plans going forward. And he really uh, served it up. How do you reckon he's saying this to? He, he gets over to the crowd and he says, you're listening. Here I am. I've just come home and I've scored the match winning try. That could be Tinkler. That could be Stoney. That could be... Maybe even to the coach down there in the Wollongong. I, I, I'm I not think, sure, but he was cranky. I just think it's emotion, though. Like, he's, uh, it's his hometown, I think, isn't it? Uh, is yep. he, is he from? Oh, he's from Perth originally. I think Western pretty, Australia, and he's, but he's played all his yeah. rugby league yeah, with the Knights. Yeah, he'd be, that'd be just raw emotion, and I think happy that he played a good, solid game. OK, but without doubt, the big highlight was the return of our esteemed panellist, Adam McDougall, had his first game back after a, a long layoff with injury and illness. Benny, you were kind enough <laughs> to sort of take us through his game here. Well, look, as you can see, um, there wasn't much to his game. And I said this to him last week. I said, mate, you sure you want to play again? Because you're doing quite a good job here on this wonderful little rugby league show we've got. I feel sorry for him on this one here, Ben, because he... Uh, He's had, to, he's had to protect himself as well. And you know, I think I'll see that as a reaction that was a uh, very much purely accident. So I thought, well, it only I, fair, I they do. thought it only fair at the back end of his performance that I put together what I've affectionately called the Mad Dog Report. So here it is. I've given him some scores around the key aspects of his game and attack. <laughs> oh, uh, three out of ten, disgusting. Uh, Defence, not much better. Four out of ten. And I went to the polls and asked, should he retire effective immediately? from Rugby League, and it came back 100%. Now, I should say, uh, qualify that poll, uh, I was the only one that voted, but um, no, Dukes, Mike, we love is, you, buddy. This is McDougal to know that I um, had nothing to do with that. <laughs> He's right on the show next week, and you're... I'm away. Yeah. Very Coincidentally, yeah. Now, Adam McDougal was back tonight. Boys, does he need to reverse his decision to retire at season's end, Ricky? Uh, no, Sel. I was actually... Um, when I got into the production meeting tonight and he wasn't there, I was wondering where he was, but playing, playing again, dude. He's back for his first game. So, uh, no, Sel, he's had a wonderful career and I think it's a, um, I think it's time for Dukes to hang up the boots as he, uh, as he's made the decision. With a grand right final call. win, yeah, OK. She's all over, Dukes. See you, champ. It's been a wonderful <laughs> career. And it well is done. all over for us too and Dukes is looking for you, let me tell you. OK, don't forget the footy continues on one on Thursday night with the game plan at 8.30 with special guests West Tigers captain Robbie Farrah and Newcastle coach Rick Stone. Sport now with Tony Squires and everybody, including my beloved Eels, trying to get a spot in the eight. Yeah, it's great, isn't it, Chris? Very, very exciting. And tonight we're going to try to work out who it will be that takes that spot with Matty Johns and Mark Guy's fearless predictions. All the league is next. Plus, rivalry round comes early for this cowboy, smashing the club that dumped him. Dump night, Corey Patterson celebrated his first game for the Cowboys, who won without Jonathan Thurston last night. Kurt Gidley injured a hamstring and is out of Newcastle's next clash with Manly. So after 18 rounds, the top five is clear cut. Then it gets really interesting. The Panthers are eighth, but only the last place Titans are really out of the race. The Roosters are second last, but just two wins outside the eight. The Knights are confident they can beat Manly on Sunday without Kurt Gidley. Instead of giving orders, the Newcastle skipper was taking them today as he recovers from another hamstring strain. He's been on fire the last couple of weeks. Uh, you know, he's, he's one of those players you, want, you need in your team. But they'll have to stop the Sea Eagles form player, Kieran Foran, who turned 21 today. Now coming up next, we take a look at the rest of this weekend's games and we also catch up with Newcastle Knights coach Rick Stone. See you shortly.
Corey Patterson enjoying a try for his first game of the Cowboys. It was against his old club, the Newcastle Knights. And a message for somebody he said it definitely wasn't the crowd. Newcastle and Manly, Joel Kane on Sunday. Should be a beauty up at Osgood Stadium. Yeah, the loss really uh, on Monday night uh, put that top five away for the time being for Newcastle. Got to focus on the top eight now. But um, good news, Neville Costigan comes back. Of course, Gidley won't be there on the weekend. But it's a big game for Newcastle. I think they'll really push Manly. But Manly always look a better side when Steve Maddow, he's back into the side, back into the centres. That balance they have on each side with line and on the other side and, and of course Foran and Cherry Evans just crafting their magic on either side. This is a good side, this Manly side. King's been named the co-captain but he did come off with an ice pack uh, on the hamstring last week uh, for Manly so he'd be in some major doubt I'd imagine. Should be a great game, should be a huge crowd up there and the Newcastle coach Rick Stone joins us from Newcastle. G'day Rick, thanks for your time. Evening gents, how you doing? Mate, very well. We'll get on to the game and uh, Monday night in a moment but... Um, just there's been so much news happening, it's almost quick to forget that one of the greatest nights of all time, Danny Badaris, is saying he wants another crack at things. Where does that stand for next year with Danny? Yeah, not sure. Obviously, um, you know, we've got to come to agreement with Leeds and, um, you know, make sure that they've got the right sort of scenario for themselves as well. Of course, Bedsy would love to come back and we'd love to have him, but there's a little bit to, a little bit to go yet. Kirk Gidley, um, obviously a great teammate of Danny's for a long time. He came off the field and he's going to be out for a little while. Obviously a massive blow, albeit Ryan Stig has fitted nicely into the side over the last few weeks. But you're going to miss your captain. Yeah, we always miss Kurt, obviously, and uh, we probably struggled a bit when he left the field on Monday night. Um, look, young Ryan Stig's taken his chance and definitely does, deserves an opportunity again this weekend. Mate, I love picking our players. Uh, Joel Edwards, I'm a big rap on him, and also Neville, Neville Costigan coming back into the side. It's very important to get in an arm wrestle with the Manly side. Yeah, they like being physical manly, there's no doubt about that one. Um, look, Joel Edwards and Neville Costigan can definitely help us in that department. Um, you know, Nev's been out for a couple of weeks and was just starting to find some form before he had to go in and get a little scope on um, a knee. Um, he's chomping at the bit and really keen for Sunday. Rick, I think you've done a great job with the team this year with all the distractions. You've got them there in that top bunch. Um, but you've had a bit, of a bit of bad luck as far as handing the bat with injuries. But I just think if you can get that right team on the field at the back end of the season, you've got some good players and you might be able to, you know, rock up a few cages. Yeah, look, how we handle ourselves in that next couple of weeks is important. Obviously, Monday night wasn't good for us. Um, probably just dropped us back a little bit. But um, looking forward to the Manly game. Always a big game, Manly and Newcastle and Newcastle. And uh, Sunday should be no different. Now, Rick, we're just seeing some footage of that wonderful win over St George Illawarra. Blocker spent time in the New South Wales camp with Akila Uate. And there's no doubt there's a man crush there. And I think everyone who follows New South Wales shares that man crush with Akila Uate. Tell us about what he's like week in, week out at Newcastle and obviously how he's developed into this elite player. Look, he's worked hard, Aku, at his game. Um, look, he had a few rusty edges a couple of years ago, but um, over the last 18 months, really worked hard. Always had some natural talent. You know, a great character to have around the team, as Block would understand. You know, he's always got a smile on his face and he's always bouncing around and, and bringing plenty of energy to the team. So he, he's re worked really hard and, and deserves everything he gets. Rick, I've got an apology to make to you. I think I jinxed you guys last week. I said that you guys would be the team to come home strongly with all your players back into the side. I'm very sorry, mate. Uh, no Jonathan Thurston last week against the Cowboys. Was the expectation there that you just had to go on the field and win with the players? Yeah, I don't know what it was, Block. We'd been up for a couple of weeks and we've been fighting really hard in our games. Um, you know, we made too many errors in the game. I'm not taking anything away from the Cowboys. They played really well. But, um, you know, we let ourselves down. There was an opportunity for us to just, you know, put, put two or four points between us and maybe the next team. And, um, you know, we let ourselves down and we, we're keen to make up for a Sunday. Rick, uh, of course, uh, not Monday night so much, but prior to the few weeks before that, that month uh, before that, your defence was just superb. And no doubt Wayne Bennett coming to the club. Uh, obviously the players know that's an area where Wayne Bennett is so, uh, you know, concerned about defence. Is, is that something that plays on the players' mind or something you're telling the players that they need to get in order? Oh, look, we've been working hard, I suppose, the last 18 months and um, put, putting a few defensive strategies together. But probably the most important thing we've shown in the last month, apart from Monday night, was the resolve. Uh, you know, the working for each other and the absolute desperation that we had for each other. Um, you know, and that's been really important to being competitive in, in the last eight weeks. Look, we've won some, we've lost some. And, um, you know, but we've really been competitive and showed plenty of resolve, particularly on our goal line, D. 
I think anyone who loves rugby league, Rick, felt for you, not just that the club signed Wayne Bennett, a great signing for the club, but the dilemma you face, whether to stay as his assistant or try and find a hand elsewhere, you've decided to stay on as an assistant coach. What are you most looking forward to about working with Wayne next year? Well, I'll probably find a little bit about how he motivates the players. I, I understand he probably keeps it pretty simple, which I think I like to do as well. But um, how he motivates and gets the best out of his players, and obviously, you know, how honest he is and, you know, how upfront he needs to be to sort of get that particular respect. So, yeah, it'll be interesting working with Wayne and obviously a, a few of his support staff that are coming. So, looking forward to it. Well, we're certainly looking forward to getting to Osgrid Stadium on Sunday. Should be a full house, we hope, and a great game against Manly. Good luck with it and for the rest of the year, Rick. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Thanks for having me. There is the very, very good Newcastle Knights coach, Rick Stone. Now, Fatty makes a contribution to the segment this week. He was sitting back at his mansion up in the hinterland on the Gold Coast and he was watching his 3D, his HD screen. He texted me and said, did you see that on Monday Night Football? Matt Hilda just came out of the screen. Watch it. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Good spotting. He watches closely. Very good spotting. Some people just sit at home counting tackles and hit-ups. Not fat man. He was on the lookout for snot. I'm a well fan of get snot. <laughs> now, I follow, apologies for that, but uh, now we go X-rated. Dirty Dancing with a mascot. Mascot porn, basically. Remember Igor's mascot? He's at it again last week. The Manly Seagulls mascot. He, I mean, this sort of stuff. Come on. <laughs> I mean, yeah, ladies, just cool down. It's a bloke and a fiberglass head. Come on. Uh, Dick Viewani for the Queensland Reds. Well done. Super Rugby final celebrating. He's been good this year. And doing the dance, Uncle Wayne is on his way to Newcastle. Very cute. Nice stuff from some of the young Newcastle fans. Stuff they may have missed. The Knights play host to the Manly Seagulls this afternoon up at Osgrid Stadium. You'll see our coverage from 4 p.m. Maybe not a long rivalry, but of course, 1997, the Newcastle Knights won their first competition. I mean, next to me had a little bit to do with it over the Manly Seagulls, and they have a fantastic record, the Newcastle Knights over Manly in Newcastle. In fact, they've won eight of their last nine games. But without Kurt Gidley, not an easy one this afternoon, Joey. No, it's the, uh, well, I think the Knights will really lift in it. They'll come at Manly really hard after the defeat by the Cowboys at home last week. Uh, Manly are flying at the moment, and the, the matchup of Jared Mullen versus Kieran Four, and I, I can't wait for this matchup today. And they're, they're talking, you know, 25, 28,000 people here. It's going to be one heck of a game. And a fantastic play to go and watch rugby league. If you haven't been to Osgrid since it's been uh, redone, get out there because it's a wonderful uh, place to be watching your football from. Now, Parramatta have played both of these sides in relatively recent times. Uh, a narrow loss to the Knights where they battled hard. You had Manly on toast before David Williams killed you with a kick. What do you make of these two sides? Um, two sides that will try hard the whole game. Uh, Manly, the more the side that I think will, will try and wear a team down with good ball control. They'll just chip away, chip away, chip away until the other team makes mistakes. And Newcastle, um, they like to be a bit more flair, I think. But um, I, it's going to be a close one, but I'm going to have to take Manly. I just think that their back row, Manly's back row, will just get a bit too strong for them. Steve Maddow, back from suspension for Manly, uh, takes his place in the centres. And I think Ivan Chumavave might be out for is, Newcastle. What about William Hopawati? There's talk that, that there, he's going to... Be, there was a whisper, but I don't think he is back okay. this afternoon. I think they're going to leave that an, an extra week. I think Dan Tola will come into the, the run-on side for Newcastle. So an absolute beauty up there. Uh, we hope the rain stays away, but it'll be a good contest, um, no doubt. Pressure on Newcastle now. They beat the Dragons two weeks ago. Um, I think they're expected to beat North Queensland without Jonathan Thurston Monday night. They are right in the mix for this top eight. Uh, as you can see there, they are the outsiders when it comes to centre bet. Now, our Isuzu D-Max margin competition. I've, I've got to give Andrew Johns a wrap. Last week, Go for your tipped, life. tipped Manly <laughs> by 14 and... The Seagulls won by 14. Smart money. So you you vanquished Brad Fittler. Whatever that you, means. You, yeah, you, yeah, did you, that too. You killed, I you felt killed it. our I home. Felt our it. home <laughs> I don't think I did that. I don't think I vanquished so you. So there's some pressure on you this that was week. Late one night we've done that pretty <laughs> Yeah, don't go there. Um, Let's go to you first. You're in form. Who do you yeah, like? Well, as I said, Newcastle at home, they're going to really lift. I like Newcastle by two points. I think it'll be a really tight one. Freddie? I think it'll be a tight one, but I think Manly will win. Okay. So I'll go by four. Well, Giles Goodwill from Newington in New South Wales is tipping the Seagulls by 12. Mm. So we'll get a result there. And while you're here, you're not part of the competition, Nathan, but who do you like? Manly. You like by Manly? 
uh, 13. Oh, you are tipping by margin now. OK. It's a, it's a field goal <laughs> weekend. That might, might be the case. Um, who's going to kick Jack the field Norville. goal? Uh, Choc, we'll give Choc a crack at the yeah. field goal. Choc, I don't, I don't think so. So no story. Stay tuned for Sturlo, Freddie and um, Barjas. Go. Now, Ryan Stig has been in good form. He's, he knows uh, Kieran Foran pretty well. He also knows young Cherry Evans. Uh, we caught up with him for Around the Grounds. Um, I played with Kieran in uh, Aussie Schoolboys and played against Cherry. Played against Cherry last year, actually. He played for Sunshine Coast so, um, and through Toyota Cup as well. So, yeah, it'll be good, good coming up against them, yeah. People have compared that step of yours to, to Brad Fittler. Did you ever look at some Brad Fittler stuff, or what's your reaction to that? Uh, yeah, I don't know about that, but um, yeah, he, he was one of my favourite favourite players growing up. I used to love watching him play. So, yeah, for for people to say that, you know, it's pretty, um, pretty pretty flattering, I guess. But yeah, no, he he, he definitely was one of my favourite players growing up. Yeah, and one of your favourite panelists on the TV, no doubt as well. <laughs> yeah, no, he is. He's 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 good to listen to, Freddie. He's pretty funny actually. So yeah. <laughs> Tell you what, yeah, and Ryan said that he'll pass that money on to you when he gets the opportunity, Freddie. But uh, the stig. It's a good. It's, it's a, it is a good about. Wow. Who was it? Who was in that west side? Oh, look at that. Uh, uh, big Elry Hanley. Trevor. Trevor. Oh, very exciting. Bit older than 17 there. Oh yeah, look at that. Look at that big blur. Yeah, look at that blur. <laughs> <laughs> Kids down there That's where all the power comes from. What about Stiggy? Yeah, we look much alike. <laughs> what about what about Joe? What about Joey commented about someone else's blurter? I don't know whether you can allow you're allowed to do that. Now Wes Naguama up at the Newcastle Knights has been playing good footy. What about the theatrics he showed at the back end of that game? Well, not not at the back end, but at the uh, in the dead ball line for the clash with the Cowboys. It was outstanding. We asked him about it. Uh, yeah, no, there was not much thought into it. I sort of touched it and the ball was sort of going dead, so I, I just sort of, yeah, just had to keep it in and lucky, lucky it came off sort of thing, otherwise we'd be, be a line dropout and the Cowboys on our line again, so yeah, a yeah, bit of luck involved there, so yeah, it was good. We probably think of you more as a centre and maybe even a little bit surprised how good you're going at the fullback. You'd be happy to go back into the centres? Yeah, well, preferred position is, is the centres, uh, but uh, in saying that, um, I've, always, I've always said I'll, I'll slot into wherever wherever's best for the team and wherever the coach wants me. So, uh, yeah, the full-back's where he wants me at the moment, so that's just making a fist of that at the moment. It was, it was a mighty thing to do, Pete, wasn't it? Uh... I don't want to put a dampener on it, but I got a phone call from Ray Warren, and Raps knows his rules. He said you're not allowed to do that. Oh, really? The player's not allowed to throw the ball forward deliberately right. and go back and get it. So, um, if anyone had asked Raps, I'll ch we'll check with him this afternoon, of course. Is but Joey Messenger used to throw it over there. Well, no, I know you're, not, I know you're not allowed to do it. In the, I know you're allowed lot, not allowed to do it in the field of play, but there could be. We'll, we'll check. May the, well be. We'll check the rule book for for the in goal no. because there's all sorts of different right. rules when it comes to outside of play and in the in but goal. But he got away with it anyway. He sure did, and, and it looked. It looked Terrific. Now, um, young Edwards uh, from the Newcastle Knights, he absolutely smashes them in defence. He played with uh, Joey's old alma mater, the Cessnock Goannas, and we caught up with him. Uh, the days at Cessnock Goannas, you know, you know it's it it very much like that, playing footy back there, so it's good, good fun. Didn't have any brothers or, or sisters in the backyard to start early with your dad, anything like that? Yeah, I have um, uh, two younger brothers and a younger sister and we definitely um, put shots on each other and backyard footy was very much alive in Cessna. Quite a nice history of back rowers uh, in Newcastle, Ben Kennedy, uh, Adam Muir, uh, Billy Peden. Have you modelled yourself on anyone? Yeah, especially coming through, um, you know, two years ago, you know, Simo, like, sort of feeding off him and, you know, and I often see Billy around, so, it's, you know, it's, it's good to, um, you know, to understand the history of the club and, you know, with, um, you know, Matty and Joey also helped me, you know, it's, it's been great. Yeah, he just looks like a future rep player, doesn't he? Hits so hard, Joel Edwards, and celebrates his 23rd birthday today, so happy birthday to him.